Phyllis, you hear me? Hello? You hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Desiree, good evening. Hey, Bart. Hi. 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 Ja, heel goed met jou. Ja, Hi. Okay. Hi there, Bart. Well, okay. well, welcome to our, I think our 10th webinar now. Uh, we yeah. live now, Faith. Yeah, 10th webinar. Uh, we've actually, there's, there's 10 that we've done with Stallion AI services, and we've done a couple, obviously, as well uh, on the mayor side. So a big, big welcome to you all tonight. Uh, I'm eternally grateful, really, for all the people that have come to these webinars. Uh, we've got well over a thousand people signed on. We've broken all the records tonight. So well over a thousand people have already signed up to this webinar. And as you know, it's all about semen assessment. Um, so really, I've got to start with uh, Bart, who always gets my old heart going because he literally jumps on at the webinar at the last second. But Bart, are you, are you with us? Yeah. I I'm there, are. yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, thank you. So, um, <laughs> okay. um, and really appreciate Bart being at Chocom Owens for many, many years. His experience and what he adds to these webinars is absolutely second to none. Um, he knows all about, obviously, the semen process, and tonight is all about how we assess semen and about the optimal sperm dose. Now, for the first time in a long time, we brought a woman into the mix, so we've got Desiree. Uh, Desiree, can you hear us okay? Yeah, very well, yeah, very good. well. I've yeah. known Desiree for, how many years have we known each other, Desiree? A long time now, I think, isn't it? Yeah, very long I think, time. I think, I think when you worked at Nyhoff, but Desiree's got uh, decades of experience with handling stallions, collecting off stallions, assessing semen. So she's going to be a vital part, really, in giving her inside knowledge as well into how we process or handle it. And tonight's one is obviously it's semen assessment. There's going to be, uh, please get your questions coming in. Um, last time there was loads of questions. We can only answer so many, but we'll always try and get and ask them afterwards if we can't. So get those questions coming in. If we don't explain something or we want to know a bit more, there's Faye over here who will be uh, getting the questions to us, which will be giving the questions out. We've got three poll questions we're going to put to you. So just uh, if you can answer them, uh, uh, that'd be great. Now, none of tonight can be done without our sponsors. Uh, none of us get paid uh, to do this. We just enjoy doing it. So I appreciate, obviously, everybody coming on, uh, Bart and Desiree helping us with this. Um, but without our sponsors uh, tonight, we could not run these things. So uh, one of our main sponsors tonight is Spurvital. Um, they supply extenders for fresh uh, and chilled and frozen semen. They all supply uh, equipment uh, for collection of semen, semen assessments, analyzing and transport. And they're world-renowned. They distribute their stuff all over the world. 
But, but while you're giving, and I thank Marika for doing this, they're giving an extra prize tonight. But you have to stay right to the end, I'm afraid, to get this prize. But they're giving away either an AI toolkit with all the equipment to inseminate 25 inseminations or a box of three liters of their extenders, which is, well, that's a pretty good prize. Uh, there's a lot of money in that. Somebody we picked out at random uh, and uh, we really uh, appreciate Spur Vital sponsoring us. Also tonight, we've got Chemotech who are sponsoring us and Chemotech is a worldwide leading manufacturer on all areas of cell counting. We're gonna be looking at their equipment tonight and it really is second to none. So what's tonight about? It's all about why we should uh, uh, assess semen, uh, how we go about assessing semen quality, it's, um, and what we have to do, uh, what can affect when we uh, assess semen, uh, what is the optimal sperm dose? You have to know what should you be putting in that mare, how much semen should you put in, be putting in that mare, and when you're AIing it, you want to be knowing have you got enough to get that mare in full, and another techniques of low uh, dose insemination. Just to say, our next webinar uh, is one of the ones that I really look forward to, one of the things I really enjoy, and that's going to be most probably at the end of January, and that's all about new technologies. So if you stick around uh, and watch the, at the end, we'll tell you when that is, and at the end, it's going to be sometime at the end of January, we'll tell you a bit more about it. It's about new technologies, about sexing semen, it's about ICSI, it's about cloning, about epididymal sperm. So all these new technologies that are around. And so tonight, these are free webinars, so everybody watching tonight, uh, it's totally free. And what we do ask, if you can, please uh, put your hand in your pocket or get an, an email at the end of this. And it's all voluntary. But if you can put it to a charity, the charity tonight is the Horse Trust. And the Horse Trust look after rescued horses and ponies and donkeys that have suffered cruelty and neglect. Uh, so please, if you can put a little bit back to them as it's a free webinar, I really appreciate that. And lastly, to thank British Breeding. They're the ones that have been behind the scenes. There's Rachel behind the scenes working tirelessly tonight in the last few days and putting these webinars on for us. So they, they very much host uh, these webinars that we can. So here at Stallion AI Services, we're going to start to show you a bit more around. And, and here's the lab. So let's crack on and uh, talk about, about the semen assessment. So if we come on over. So one, of the, one of the things we really always want to look at is why, why, sh, you know, why is it so important, obviously, and what are the main reasons that we should be doing semen assessment? We want to be making sure that the semen can freeze because everything we talked about in all these webinars, I think let's say we've done 10, it means absolutely nothing if we can't analyze the semen properly. And if you can't analyze the semen properly, you know, you're never going to get that end product good enough product to get your mares in full. So tonight we're going to try and help you out and say, right, this is what you should be looking for. You know, is it going to chill long enough? Is it going to freeze well enough? Because anybody can freeze semen, but if they can't do post-store analysis, how on earth is that product going to be good enough? So I can't tell you how important semen analysis is um, to getting your mares in full, making sure you're providing a really good service to your mare owner. And also if you're veterinarians out there, um, knowing when you get that sample, what should you be looking for? You know, how many millions of sperm cells should you be looking for? Uh, how progressive they should be and so that. So we're going to talk all about that side of it tonight. Quality control, uh, what uh, daily sperm output, and um, about flushing the stallions out, and is there enough semen to get that mare in full? Just going back on the veterinarian side, we've just got a poll coming up now. So it'll be quite interesting, the demographics, the last webinar we ran, it was 44 different countries, I think. But if you can, it would just be quite interesting to know how many people are actually veterinarians watching this as opposed to laymen's watching this. So it's a simple poll question, Rachel, if you can pop that up. Um, is, uh, you know, can you, uh, are you a vet? Yes or, or no? If you can, is that, is that up there yet? That one? You can pop that up, Rachel. Yeah. Um, just while that's going uh, forward. The next thing is the equipment uh, that you that you need to assess semen quality. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but obviously, or well, pretty obvious, I mean, but obviously you need a microscope. Um, and you don't need uh, anything, uh, whiz-bang microscope, a real high-powered one, but 
some basic things that you need about the microscope, but we're going to go more about the microscope uh, in a minute. Um, the other thing is you need a heated stage uh, on here, but we'll talk about that in a bit more. So actually heat that semen up. If you don't look at the semen at the correct temperature, it's never going to give you the, the, the right quality. We're going to look at pipettas as well, the equipment. Um, and we're going to look at the, the, the size of droplet that you should use. Uh, water bath for heating up. Yep. The so poles in. The poles in. There we go. So 58% yes and 42% no. That's good. So of the thousand people out there, if they're all watching, there's over 50% of veterinarians. Well, it's great that you've joined us. Just remember all these other webinars are, you can link them on and we can always soon send them out to us. So you can send us a, an email to Stallion AI services and we can also show you the previous webinars uh, on that. So, and the other things you need is obviously a water bath, uh, and cover slips and cover slides and obviously something to read the density which we'll go through in a minute how dense that semen is um, so right the semen first comes into us and uh, the first thing we do is when we get this sample here's one we slightly prepared earlier is we actually weigh our samples Bart you weigh your samples do you uh, when you collect off your stallions you weigh them do you yeah uh, only only the Dixon Barner one of the most famous uh, men of this showed us that exactly the one ml of uh, nature salmon is exactly one ml, uh, one gram. So we always weight it because that's really, really correct as you know exactly what you have. And it, it's just very, very accurate. So we got 45 mils with the semen. And I always think when you get these samples in, I don't know what you think, Desiree, but I think straight away you can tell when you get that sample, depend is is just not even by looking under the microscope, you can tell a bit of about the colour uh, and, and and so on. Do you agree, Desiree? Yeah, absolutely. Also, the concentration and the colour is very important, of course. And even uh, when they some stallions they are peeing in uh, during ejaculation. So um, and sometimes also a little bit of drop of pee. And if you work then very quickly, you can uh, you can save the semen. But normally, if the, the whole bottle is full of pee, you can throw it away. You can do nothing but it because the color and uh, it's so important. And sometimes uh, when the color is a little bit of yellow, it's also doubting of an infection. And you have to be aware of that. Also, oh. that's the dog. That's is that your dog, Bart? <laughs> or, or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it won't be up that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a cream. <laughs> I think as soon as you get this sample in, I think I always say to people, what's the first thing is that so they said, oh, look at it under the microscope. I say, no, just look at your sample <laughs> to see if there's any contamination in there. Is there any blood, urine? And you can tell really what sort of ejaculate you've got straight away in front of you, how dense it is <laughs> as, as well. So uh, that's, uh, so the next thing we want to do is look on the microscope. But before we look on the the microscope, I think one of the things we have to look at is actually setting up the microscope. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, uh, that we, we, we do is um, setting a microscope up for looking at semen. I always think one of the, the best things to do is you just get a, a marker pen and you put an X on it. Try to focus in to start with. If your microscope isn't focused in to start with, it is very difficult if you do it onto semen. But if you do it onto an X, on here, it is sometimes quite easy to do. So, that's already on that one. So if we go across, we can see there's a dark shadow up there. So if we can go up here, we'll try and zoom in onto something. Uh, where are we? Oh, there's something there. And straight away, you can start to see the corner of the X. And if I get it on the corner of the X, um, Hopefully you can see that now. You can actually see that we've actually tuned in to that, that part of the slide. So that is one way. And then we can start to do, put a drop of semen on there and, that, and it shouldn't be too far off. Um, Desiree, what sort of size droplet do you tend to use when you analyze semen? Would it be that, that 10, uh, what is it, 0 0.10? Yeah, yeah, 10, 10, yeah, 10, 10 microliters. Yeah, is that yes, what yes. you use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know what you think, but I think this is uh, one of the one things that people mess up uh, sometimes. They put different size droplets each time. 
if you put the same size droplet on each time when you analyze, you get the same, the, the, the same results. So we- Yeah, I um, totally agree because um, uh, sometimes people uh, put a very thick strap under a microscope and you uh, are going to uh, analyze actually low and low and low. It always looks much better and much concentrated than it really is. So it's so the, the drop is so important to analyze demons, absolutely. There's going to be so many little tips. A lot of this stuff you may already know out there, but these tiny little tips will make analyzing semen so much better. So I must know, I used to use these plastic things years ago, but they don't always give you the same size droplet. So literally 10 microliters, uh, and we, we, we go into our, our pot, we pull it up, and uh, we just got 10 microliters there, and then we put a drop on the slide. And is that gel-free semen, Tullis? Yeah. yeah. So, so someone's just asked if, uh, if it's uh, gel-free, the semen, and yes, it would be. So. Here, so, uh, so the the styling ejaculates in three main fractions. We get the uh, pre-ejaculatory fluid, uh, the sperm-rich fraction, and we get the gel, copious substance. So we're only getting the gel. Uh, we get rid of the gel as the styling ejaculates, and we just have the, the raw semen. That's what we want to look at initially, straight away. Bart, do you look at it, the raw semen, or do you add extender to it first before you look at it? Um, I, I take the raw semen, I have a look with my eyes, and if I have young stallions, for sure, uh, the nature semen, if I collect every day and every day and every day, I know the semen, then I do direct centrifugation mm -hmm. and check after centrifugation. And, and, and uh, why do you think it's important to uh, look at it before you dilute it? To know, uh, to make a... a my my mind, how it's looking, how concentrated it is. Uh, I can smell if it's okay, because yes. I smell something is couldn't be wrong. Um, then uh, you can make your opinion, and you know what you have to do uh, with the semen uh, afterwards to make. Yeah, it but good. yeah, you're right. I mean, I know it sounds a bit weird, but just smelling to see if you've got urine. Sometimes you can't tell whether you've always got urine, but you can actually smell it. And I totally agree with Bart because we don't, you know, it's great to have all these different uh, people on the on these webinars because we don't necessarily do everything exactly the same. But I always like to look at the raw initially because you want to see what the effect of the extender has on it. So you want to look at the raw and then adding the extender to it could could make a difference, good or bad. So it's quite good to see the raw to start with. So we've got some uh, semen on here. I just and the other thing before is the warm stage. Now. I, can't tell you how important it is to making sure that this uh, the warm stages where your semen is sitting is at the correct temperature um, again a lot of people analyze semen without having a warm stage so we can get a, a, a promise and just check and it's, it's just just under 37 degrees uh, so we want this about 37 which is spot on uh, and then the semen is going to be uh, moving at the, the correct um, the correct uh, way so, so we have a look on the slide here. So Desiree, if you're going to analyze a, a semen, what's, how do you sort of go about when you first look at semen under microscope? How do you get to a, a motility reading? How do you break it down? Well, I think it's um, very important to look at different uh, uh, sites on the microscope and see how many percent are, are, is actually living and then make a percent of it. And then you start to look at the, um, uh, the motility rate. So we go in those <coughs> nice straight forward or they making rounds, making circles. I think circles around his body, I don't like that, but big rounds, I really don't mind. Normally, uh, if you look directly after centrifugation, you sometimes see uh, motility, what is in big rounds and I don't mind. Um, and then you start to uh, two percent and uh, to see okay uh, to give the percent for how much motility it is, how much they are alive. But first look at the bigger picture and see how how many percent is living 
and then uh, then look at the straight uh, if you're going nice straight forward. Yeah. Have you got a question? There? Yeah, I've got a few questions coming in. Yeah. Um, so James Crabtree. Hi, James. Hi, Jeff. James, one of our most loyal supporters. Yes. Uh, he said, Tom, it's just as important as the size of the drop is the size of the cover slip. If you're using um, 10 UL volume sample, how big is the cover slip? Well, James, I have to admit, you're, what a star, because I must admit, I've, 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 uh, that was on my list to say, but I've skipped over it. So you're absolutely spot on there. Um, you, you're right, because it's all about the dissipation. Uh, I wonder whether I can show you on here, actually, at working. Um, so the, the, the answer to the question is 22 by 22 uh, mil uh, cover slides. Uh, you can see them on, if you have a look on here, it's 22 by 20 mil. Because if you use smaller ones, you need to use a smaller size droplet. Um, That's so what I do. I use the same, do you? Thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I use I use smaller, smaller but a smaller drop. Yeah, zero point six, and then I yeah. have also the smaller glass, so that's correct. If you make yeah. it on one, you have to make bigger glass. That's right. It, it, exactly. So it's how, and I, I'll try and demonstrate it on here if we can. It's just whether the camera will pick it up at all. Um, so if I was to put a, a droplet on here, can you see that? Okay, Etienne. Yeah. And you expel it totally out. And then we've got to grab a slide. I'm going to show you how we do these slides in a minute. Um, it's a bit hard to do it all here, but I'll try and do it. And you've got to see, can you see that okay or not? Yeah. I'll just try and let it fall on it. Yeah. And it spreads nice and evenly on it. Sometimes you get air bubbles, but that spread nice and easy. So what you're looking for is one film of semen. I'll do a demonstration. So that is uh, 10 microliters. Let's put 20 microliters on there uh, and just show you the difference when you analyze semen. Where's our pot here? So we'll put 25. It's like it's going to swim in there, isn't it? And so, yeah, that's going to be, I'm going to show on the big screen, Etienne. So. So, the, so there you can see on the slide here, you can see all the individual sperm cells uh, swimming around quite freely. And that's with a 10 microliter drop with a 22 by 22 mil slide. I hope this works. And then on here, look at that. How are you, it's near impossible to analyze this semen properly. That's, that's a 20 microliter drop. Um, I always say, if you want to try and press a, 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 your mayor owner or a stallion owner, just put a bigger yeah. drop on there. You, 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 is, that, is that right, Desiree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes you have an airdrop in, uh, in, the, in the slide, you know, when it's not totally yeah. filled. Yeah. And then if you put uh, the, the view next to this airdrop, the semen are looking crazy to the airdrop. So it always looks actually better than it really is. Exactly, because yeah. what because it lifts the cover slide ever so, ever so slightly up. So that's a perfect demonstration. Another thing I try and demonstrate now when we're analysing semen, but it won't necessarily always work, is so um, I'll get another slide here. Yeah. I'll get our 10 microliter drop. And we will put this drop on the, on the slide here. I'll pick up the cover slip here. And I'll hold the cover slip like this. I know it's a bit of an over-exaggeration, um, but it's not too bad in the winter, but in the summer when your hands are a little bit sweaty, you put this on and it kills the semen very quickly. Right, yeah. Um, so it will just, I don't know whether this, I'll try and see if this will work. Have a look at that, there you go. So see, see the semen there? It does not look good at all. And that's because I touched the cover slide. It's exactly the same amount of semen if I was, so that just shows how important it is. If you get any of your fingers on that cover slide, it can really have a detrimental effect on that semen. And semen analysis, you really want to have a true and accurate record of what that semen is like in this pot. And you don't want to have any influence in how good or bad that semen is. So coming back to motility, we'll put another drop on here, a 
10 micro litre drop. Where are we? Um, and the way that we like to, to analyze seam, and I like to, and I think Desiree was saying, is I quite like to look at the, um, let's warm it up a little bit, because it's, it's amazing how seam, if it's been sitting uh, not warmed up, it only takes a little bit of warming up and it really comes, comes back to life very quickly. There we have it. So on here, we can see actually most of the Siemens moving. And what I'd like to see if they can leave our field of vision. So I always break this down. So do we think is there more or less than 50% moving? And obviously, and there's, there's two types of motility when we're doing semen analysis. There's motility and there's progressive motility. Okay. Uh, and so motility is everything moving. And as you can see to start with, Everything is moving in this. There's, there's a few dead ones here, but pretty much there's more than 50% uh, moving here. And the way I do it is then I look at this, is there more or less than 75% moving here? And we'd most probably say there's most probably a little bit more than 75, or we might say there's about 75%, I'd say about 75% moving there. And then we look at the progressive ones and seeing it's always gonna be slightly less than the total motility. Um, and, uh, and we want to see what's going in a forward straight, uh, straight line. So on these ones here, most of them are moving forward. There's a few that are going around in circles. But as Desiree said, we don't mind big circles, but what we don't like is small circles. So, so Bart, is there anything when you're analysing semen, is there anything you really look for in motility when you're analysing it? No, it's the same like you say. Uh, so first, I, uh, I try to get always to 100. I make one cut in the middle, it's alive or not, 50% or more, yes, it's more, 75, like you just said. Yeah. And then I have a look and um, uh, then we not say it's, uh, we make in, in Germany, we say it's going forward, so it's the, the fast straight away and the big circles, the small circles, or not because a lot of people say it's dead, but for that you have to do other things to find out if they are dead or not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, okay, we make three parts. So fast moving, uh, progressive moving, and uh, without moving. That's how we do. Sorry, we're gonna say something. Any questions? Loads. Loads of questions, <laughs> all right, okay. Yes, um, so we have a question from Brian. Um, Hi, Brian. Hello. Uh, why is the first ejaculate always uh, discarded? Well, Bar, Bar, Bar was the name with Bar. Yeah, if you watched any of our previous webinars, we always look at, uh, at the, uh, uh, we actually sometimes use the first ejaculate, but uh, Bar, I'll let, I'll let you answer this one because I know you, you don't even look at it. You throw it away, Bar. Go on, Bar. You, if, you answer this I, question. If I get young stallions, for sure, the first three, four times, I just collect and don't look even at the semen. The only thing I look uh, at the fluid, what I have, if it looks, if there is semen inside or not. And then I throw it away. And after three, four times to flesh them out, to make them clean, then I start to make my analyzing and uh, see what the semen is. Um, one of the reasons is first, there are a lot of old stuff inside. With the first collection, you might think you have about 20 billion of semen and at the end you get every second day or every day four or five. So you think you have a study with a lot of uh, amount of semen, but at the end you have uh, only a little part of this. So uh, I prefer to flesh them out first, make them clean and then start to analyze. Yeah. I know if you are a vet that you have to do it for for the customer, then you have to make a plan that you say, okay, I just collect three, four times, I don't look, make another price because you don't do anything else. But yeah, uh, in my case, it's easy because I have to stay just for my boss so I can do a few times and then wait till the semen is really good. Right, yeah, because um, so the, the reason is just flushing it. Whoops, I was gonna warm a bit up to get a bit cold here. We're gonna use it on the iceberg. So, um, 
yeah, I must admit, we do uh, look at the first samples and, and do it because the stallions are quite often here on a very short time period when they're being collected from. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, there's another question from Shirley Light. Shirley's oh, Shirley. Us. Hi, Shirley. Um, what causes semen to have a grey tinge? A grey tinge. Now, what I, I wouldn't say it's definitely this, but the foot. Maybe I'll throw this over to Desiree because I know what I was going to say. But Desiree, why do you think something might have a slight grey tinge to to uh, to a sample? I presume she means when you see the, the collection bottle, it's a bit slightly grey in there. When it's grey, you mean the concentration? Or yeah, when it, uh, it's, it's looking a bit a bit. Well, I suppose I'm going to give it away. What I think, a bit dirtier. Yeah. A bit dirtier. Then you need to wash. Wash. You need now, to wash and use a filter. Yes, yeah. I really, I really recommend that. Yeah, I've and it's it's a really good important one, Shirley, that because a lot of people don't wash the stallions off beforehand, and I think hopefully you agree with me. You can straight away see on the screen. So you see on the screen here, we've got a little bit of debris down here, but the slide is pretty much clean. If we hadn't washed that seam, that that penis off, you would see bits of debris like this all over. Do you agree? Uh, Desiree and Bart? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I really like to do it. Yeah. Sorry, Bart. So, you go. So I'm not saying okay. definitely because it's grey, but uh, uh, we we have some stallions that and he got a root. We did it on the last webinar or a few webinars, is washing the penis off reduces up to 80% of the bacterial contamination in a sample, and it will be much, much clearer and it won't be so great. So I hope that's uh, Shirley. It'd be great. Shirley, you're one of our great uh, supporters, and I do appreciate you, um, everything you course, send your stallions to us, and I really appreciate that. So, yep, and um, question on uh, motility. So, yeah. how close should total and progressive motility be? What happens if the difference is over 50%, and why does that happen? That's a very good question. <laughs> I love that question. Uh, because Basically, on this sample here, it's dying off, but I would say there's only about a 5% difference, really. It's most probably about 75 or 70% 70 progression. Um, now, if it was 75% and it was suddenly, uh, just say it was 30, and it was all going around in tight little circles, is it, it, what do you think may have caused that, Desiree, to, to see them to go around in circles? Yeah, well, centrifugation has a good influence for, for uh, uh, circles, but uh, you need to be aware of that because if you uh, look at motility directly after centrifugation, most of the times you see bigger circles. And, uh, but uh, circles around the body, it's most of the time uh, stressed, not handling very well. I think that's also very important. What's that? And, uh, What's that? Yeah, stress, yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it, you have to be aware of that as well. And um, yeah. And it, also, uh, I think, I, I don't know whether you agree, or I think some, if you get water contamination or if the semen's been like stressed, like you were saying, it's had cold shock, yes. um, that can affect it. So you have to, I always think if you've, it's not definitely it, but if you see semen going round and round in circles, have a look at how you're practicing your collecting. If there's water contamination, if it's getting stressed uh, in some way through being chilled uh, and, and, and so on from that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got so much to talk about because this is just on maternity. We've got to do concentration. We've got to do viability. We've got to do so much more yet. So, um, so that's motility. Hope you've got a bit of an idea on motility. Break it down. So is there more or less than 50% moving there? There's more, is it more or less than 75%? Well, it's about 75, I'd say. It may be, I'm always a bit of a pessimist and optimist. It's most probably more like 80, maybe a bit more, but we'll find out in a second. Uh, and I don't give much over 80%, I must admit. Um, so, and that's the way we, we, we tend to give motility and then look at the progressive ones uh, and to see if there's much of a difference. And that's basically, uh, but it's making sure you've got the right size droplet, 10 microliters, as James pointed out before, on a 22 by 22 mil slide, and make sure everything's warmed up and don't touch it with your fingers because you see, you saw what happened before. I don't know whether it's on this one or not. Uh, yeah, yes, have a look. This is the semen here. This is where my fingers have touched the slide and it all hates it, it kills it straight away. So um, be very careful how you handle those cover slides because that's what will happen. Can I say one thing about the cover slides? I never noticed before, but uh, for the people who are using the CASA systems, 
and they're working with Leia uh, slide, the chamber slide. The force, do you remember that? Uh, do you know that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There is an expiring date on this Leia slide, and it's not for nothing because the glue get loose. And if you are after this expiring date, then the glue get loose, and it's very can be very harmful for the semen. Oh, I right. never noticed right. before. Well, yeah. I'm looking now. I'm looking now. Yes. Right. But um, I, <laughs> I can't see much, but, um, but no, that's a good tip. And the other thing you're talking about cover slide, yeah. never look on the edge of a slide. I'll show you this seam is looking pretty good here. Looks good. If we were just to take this to the edge of the slide, you have a look at the seam now. Have you got that on there? Um, yeah. Uh, there. This is the edge of the slide. All the seam is dead. So you must look. In, we always say two or three places in the, around the middle of the slide and take an average of those two or three places very quickly. And the other thing is I always like to, my eyes, we've got some cast assistance we're gonna show you now, but I think your eyes tell you an awful lot whether the seam is going backwards and I don't know. And but the other thing we wanna look at, we haven't spoken about, is velocity, how quickly this seam is moving. I score it sort of one to five. I would score this most probably a three or nearly a four. And it's how quickly that semen is moving. We, we count two as if it's not moving uh, quick enough. Three is a pass. Four is, is pretty fast. And five is like lightning. So, uh, so that's the velocity of the semen. So we want to see how fast it's moving uh, 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 as well. All right. So the next thing, should we have a look at um, the CAS assistance? Oh, oh. We better just uh, talk about yes. This uh, we're going to use um, do a, a semen count on this. First, the viability, this, yeah, the viability. The viability. <laughs> now, this is using the um, the nuclear cell counter. Keep a tech <laughs> sponsoring tonight, and I have to admit, I, I feel a bit bad saying this. Uh, <laughs> must admit, if if Soren's watching this, because whether he was um, sponsoring us tonight, I think we would still give this machine, no matter what, an absolutely glowing reference. I don't think really there should be any lab if you're processing semen at any quality uh, quantity out there, uh, you're doing a lot uh, without one of these. It's absolutely brilliant. And the way it works is we just get a, uh, it depends how it's set up. We use the 25 microliters and we get our semen. Whenever you get semen, always make sure you give it a twirl. We put it in these cuvettes. Again, with the, even with these, you have to we, we weigh everything and we, we're really careful because if you get the wrong size droplet, make sure in here that it's properly primed up these because if you get the wrong size, it's not going to give you the right reading. We put a, we get these cubettes, we put it up and then we just press one and that will tell you the concentration. And then we actually do one more You can see here exactly the same. Ah, another little tip: if anybody have used these, it's the mistake I made when we started using these. I, because uh, they're such small uh, droplets, we put it in here. Is that when I put the first droplet on there and went and did the second lot, I used to use the same pipetta. But we found out there's always a slight bit of residue of semen in here, so you get rid of your pipetta because it will make a difference to to your amounts. Um, and then we get another. This is an, uh, uh, this this actually um, works out the viability. So I don't know whether you can home uh, home if you home in on there. This is the, the result for this nuclear cell count. It's come back at fifty nine million sperm cells. Um, I'm just going to Bart. Tell me, you you really use this machine a lot? Do you like it a lot? I use it every day and for everything. Um especially uh, just for counting, for sure, uh, to, to make sure how many doses I can make because I make small doses, so I need to know exactly how much I make in, in one dose. And after freezing for each um, sample I have frozen, uh, I freeze two stores and check and then make uh, the total amount what I have in, in the straw and also the viability, because I think the viability is uh, next to the motility, one of the most important things you need to know uh, for frozen semen to get back to. It is, and so basically how it works, this machine, so 
we take a t we take a t we use a, a, a 25 minute uh, microliter droplet, uh, and then we mix it with five mils of, uh, of this solution, and that strips away the membrane and exposes the nucleus. And in here, there's I think there's prepared in my diet, I think in here, and it actually stains that that sample. It puts it in here, and uh, as Dixon always used to say, you could virtually do it in tomato ketchup, and it would still tell you exactly how much semen is in there. It's very, very accurate, very, very repeatable. Then we go with this solution, exactly the same, 25 uh, microliters, and uh, um, and we mix it with the five mils of this. And what this does only permeates those cells that the membrane isn't intact. I've got a presentation after. I forgot to say uh, we've got a presentation after this uh, PowerPoint one, uh, and this has just come back, and it just shows the ones that have got uh, that are non-viable, which is 15%. So then it calculates. Uh, exactly how many viable so it's calculated 75 percent and that's pretty good because we we always say that viability and motility not always but are fairly closely related do you find that but most of the time not all the time but most of the time they're fairly close yeah most of the time they are very close not always because sometimes you have uh, some movements uh, that you see with your eyes and okay every human being looks a little bit uh, on his own way but yeah normally it should be quite similar yeah yeah so um it, it was as you can see we guessed it about 75 percent up there and about 70 percent progressive and and yes it is it, it's come back at 70 percent 75 percent viability so that means 75 percent of those cells are viable uh and um one of the we've got another poll question actually i think haven't we I'd be quite interested to know if you can answer this poll. Uh, Rachel, if you can put it up. Um, what do you think is the most important factor of assessing semen? I'm afraid you can only pick one of these. Do we think it is motility? Do we think it is concentration? Or do we think it is morphology? So uh, have a look at that. Pick one thing, not, not, not all three. Uh, but what do you think would be the, one of the most uh, important factors in semen assessments? So it'd be just interesting on that poll. So that's the beauty about this, the viability of this machine. It can actually tell you, you know, how viable those sperm cells are. Um, right, so now we're going over to the caches of Pam, are we? Yeah. Pam, I have to say, Pam sorted all this out today. So, um, shall we take this whole... Take the whole rack, cool. Take the whole rack over. Do you want to set up um, yeah. something there? Well, I can... So... Oh, we need a slide for the CASA system as well, Pam, please. We do actually have a question on the CASA system as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, firstly, do you use a CASA system? So, yes, we do. Um, if so, how do you think it differs from visual motility readings? Are they accurate? Should both practices be in place for a more consistent motility reading? Um, CASA systems. I think they're a great tool as an aid, and I think they're a great tool um, as, as a guide. I think if you're not comfortable of assessing semen, they're very good for reassuring you. But I think you always have to be careful. I've seen a lot of CASA systems where you can not make the CASA system say what it wants, but it all depends how that CASA system is set up. I've seen some CASA systems where I put the semen in and it says it's 75 and I've looked at it and I said, there's no way, that is 35%. So I think you have to be very careful that it's set up and used in the right way. So I think CASA systems have got a good place, um, but, um, but yes, we just have to be a bit careful on that. So uh, on, on using them. Right, so one of the CASA systems, we've got two here. We're gonna, as, I don't know where you've heard of the eye sperm. Oh yes, what's the results? 64% motility. Yeah. 8% concentration mm. and 27% morphology. Yeah, okay. So just that I would say to that, um, you could say that's what most of us see is the motility. It's one thing we should look at, but don't underestimate uh, morphology. I think morphology is one of the most important parts of, uh, of, uh, of everything. We see stuff with very poor uh, motility and and good viability and for some reason, yeah, those ones always seem to do very, very well. So I think morphology is one of the, the, the main things. What would you, what would you think, uh, Desiree, in, in this? Absolutely morphology, Ray. 
Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and also, um, yeah, it's it's not here, but uh, also underestimated DNA fragmentation. I think uh, that's very underestimated, and it's very uh, it's got a yeah yeah. If the DNA, if the semen cells are with DNA fragmentation, if the chromatin is not good, then uh, he's not fertile at all, and you can't see that on the semen. You can't see that on the morphology rate. You can't see that on the motility rate. So, yeah, that's one thing. But I also think it's very important. So um, I, th I think you're uh, um, absolutely spot on with that. So we've got the ice sperm here. So we're just going to analyze some. So, so we put a 10 microliter drop on the ice sperm. I don't know whether many of you have seen the ice sperm out there. And then we put what we do is on the chip and then we get a cap. You've got to hear a click. And that um, makes the uh, semen uh, spread evenly. And this is a, just an app on, the, on an iPad. So we can go and analyze the semen. Uh, we click on the, oh, I don't, oh, I said I don't want to start adjusting it now. So, um, and we can actually zoom in and use it as a, as a, as a microscope as well, if, if need be. Um, so this can obviously analyze uh, the semen as well uh, when, we, when, we do, when we're doing this. Yeah. I have one question. Yeah. Um, before, if you showed me the first time this ice sperm, you take your cup and make a drop and say, okay, the semen go by himself. Now you put it with the apita um, on top. Yep. Why you change this? Is it better I, or why you I do just this? find it's better, it's more consistent. You're right, and I've actually okay. my video, which is uh, I've got um, on YouTube, it's still you can dip it in. So what Bart was saying, we can actually dip these samples in. Uh, so we can um, I find putting a droplet on top just works ever so slightly better uh, to me. Okay. Uh, okay. I, uh, uh, so so you can just do it like this. Yeah, that's how you yeah, that's so, why I used it, but I prefer now to actually put the droplet on top bar. Okay, good. Good, thank yeah. you. So this has come back and it's given us 79% uh, motility on the, on the, uh, the ice sperm and 71% uh, progressive. So we have a look over here. Uh, so now we've got the CASA system. Acquire, um, isn't it? And we can actually... Uh, look into these um, and we can actually change the fields and this can count hundreds of sperm cells a second so we can press start scan uh, and it's now counting five uh, fields it's counted 380 uh, sperm cells it's given it a 90 percent with an 80 percent progressive uh, so yeah they're, they're a bit out but they're not a million miles out from each other you've got to think this is a 60 uh, 40 000 pound CASA system and the ice sperm is, a, is, a, is about, uh, 60, about 1,600. Um, but the beauty about this, this can do all the tracking uh, and, uh, and actually can analyze the semen, how it, how, it, how it tracks the sperm cells and it can pick up all the sperm cells. So it's saying on here that most of the sperm cells are actually moving, moving very, very well indeed. So I think the CASA systems are a good aid. Um, but I think your eyes, I don't know. What, what do you, do you prefer, do you, do you like the, I mean, obviously we like the casters. Do you prefer to use your eyes, Bart, or do you, do you think I, the casters? Is I never worked with the casa system, so I use my <laughs> own eyes. The only thing that I prefer for, for all the people who are outside, if it's a big breeding station, or a vet who gets semen from outside for him, and he's traveling around and he gets the semen somewhere on a farm and he cannot see in his own lab. For these people, I think it's very interesting to have the eye sperm because then they know exactly what they get and what they inseminate and not what most of the time is. They inseminate, they drive home with one drop and then they say, oh, it's not so nice, but we inseminate, so what we do now? So then they yeah. can check before. I think therefore this eye sperm is very interesting. And the beauty about the ice sperm is you can you can look at it just as a normal microscope. You can zoom in exactly. and use it, uh, or and then obviously you can do the analysis, and it will save that video um, as well uh, back to the file, back to that stallion uh, uh, as well. And you can go on uh, Facebook and Instagram and everything else at, at, at the same time. Um, 
So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and it's, and it's very repeatable, the tests and everything else that, that you do with it. So the CASA systems, I think they've got a part to play, uh, but they aren't, uh, they're good for doing, um, I think, uh, trial work or a lot of experiments because they're, they're validated and they work well, but I think using your eyes works just as well. So Pam, what are we on now? So the other part we're talking about is morphology. Now, with the morphology side of things, we, what we've done on here, we've just got a simple nigrazian eosin stain, and we've just uh, added some stain to the semen. And we've, and we've used, whenever you're looking at some of these slides, it's, I think it's always best to try and use oil immersion. It gives a much better picture on here. So we can actually see the ones that have taken up the stain are a different color. And the ones that haven't taken up the stain are, are, um, are, are in theory, their membrane is intact. Um, now, when we do morphology, what we try and do, uh, we actually use fluorescence. I can't do fluorescence tonight because we have to turn all the lights out and it just never works well on camera. But I think we've got a few slides upstairs on it. Um, but with morphology, what we're looking for is when the stain, we just count the best way is we count 100. So we'll go through and we just literally count, um, let's have a look on here, what is alive and what is dead. So we go back and count 100 of them and just find out what's alive and what's dead. Uh, and then we go back and just look at the live ones and count how many are actually live and morphologically okay. So you can see this one here is alive, but actually it's got a bent tail. So this will soon tell you how many. So on here, there's a, there's a lot dead. So in fact, all those are, are, haven't stained very well. And there, whoop. Can't believe it, but there we go. And there we have one that's perfectly all right. So we can see um, that the difference is sperm cells. Now, it's usually best to look down the microscope when you're doing this, and then you literally count very quick. We have a little counter, and we count to 100 very quickly what's taken up the stain and what hasn't. And then we go back and just look at the, the live ones and see how many of those are live and abnormal uh, from that. So if I can show you our... Can I just ask a question as well? Uh, what would you describe as good morphology? Do you... Well, really, we want to be having over 50%, uh, really, with a, the with a morphology, uh, ideally, on a, on, a, on a fresh sample from that side of it. So, yeah. Uh, and Phyllis, so, can I have one question, Phyllis? How yeah. many times can you do that? How many times do you check the morphology rate? We check the morphology. Well, we always do viability. Um, we try and do morphology at all on the frozen samples, on the fresh samples. We don't really do it unless we've got a problem. We think we've got a problem with the stallion. So, and I'll show you our forms on here that we fill out. Can you zoom in on that, Etienne? Let's just see if we can get a bit closer. You can't really see that. Can you, do you want me to turn it this way? I can't. You can't? Let's, can. let's, 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 yeah. Right, let me hold it here, right. So this is how we do our samples and our spreadsheets. So what we do here is I try and get a pipetta. We always look, the other thing I forgot to mention actually, we always look at three drops on a slide. And I should have shown you this before because all drops don't always look the same. I'm gonna show you this after. So we look at the three drops on the slide and then we take an average after that. So the average of this 30, this is post store, 35%, 37%, 35%, and it's given us a 36% uh, average. And then we look at it an hour later and we see if it drops much either. So it's still 60 minutes later, it's still 30%. And then we look at the nuclear cell counter and we find out uh, what the concentration is. Uh, oh, sorry, there. And then we look at the viability and it's 60%. And then what that does is it tells us how many millions of sperm cells we in that dose that we think is progressive and the viability is okay. And we want at least 250 million for that dose to, to pass. So that's the sort of the industry standard is 250 million uh, uh, samples. The other thing we look at, if I can try and move this across, is we also look, uh, if I can get my, ah, that's better. 
we look at the morphology. So we look at the percent live. So in other words, what is, it looks okay. Then we look at whether, what other, if they've got distal droplets, proximal droplets, bent tails. And we, we used to, we don't do it now. We used to do ORT, osmotic resistance test as well. So we used to look at that. So, uh, and then that tells us what's live and acceptable. And this has got 66% live and acceptable there which is so it's past all the uh, a lot of the time we just use the viability and we work it back uh, with the motility and we look at the velocity how quickly they're moving so if anybody's interested we do have these spreadsheets um, um, that we, we we can um, we can maybe sort out so um, this is just one of our charts that we use all right Right, what are we on now, Pam? So that's, uh, we're, time's pressing on and we've still got quite a bit to do yet. So I think uh, we've spoken about the nuclear cell counter, we've spoken about morphology. Um, some of the things that affect seam quality, obviously temperature, uh, cold shock, um, putting your fingers on the slides and things like that. I think now we've really got to move on to the optimal sperm dose. What, what are we, how much are we putting into that? And we're going to talk more about this in the presentation upstairs, but it's easier. But one of the things that the, the, the Bart that you do is uh, is you quite often load it up into a straw, don't you? Is that right? If you're doing a small insemination dose. Yeah, I, I okay because I I make the small doses because I have the vets at home, and they inseminate they do the deep insemination, and then I also uh, they also get only one straw for insemination, and this. In this one straw, there's 100 of a uh, million yeah. of things. And this is one we've done here. And I've got this <laughs> in the presentation. And Bart, you do it for a totally different reason than we do it here, I have to admit. We do the same method. So what we've done is we've just spun this semen down to the bottom of here. Um, and with those mares with a tight cervix that pull fluid, um, we find this is a really, really good way of getting these, these, these mares in folds. So we literally just get a straw. I know it sounds a bit weird, you put it down to the bottom and you just suck that, that, and that's all, that's really dense semen all in that straw. And then that can go, don't worry, it won't, it won't go any further because it's got a cotton bung if you're, if you're worried about it. Um, and then we just go and AI the mare with that one straw and it works so well. Um, as you'll see in the presentation that we did upstairs, we did five mares with a, uh, a German colleague of mine, Michaela Kohling, we did a, a bit of a project on it and it works so well. So we do it for a slightly different reason than you, Bart. Uh, but but in, this, the... in, in this, you don't know how much, maybe you have four or 500 seam sperms inside. Yeah. And I make yeah. counting after the centrifugation. I know exactly in one straw, it's 100 million. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. So we're purely, and with this way, we find we could, we've got to put it in the mare straight away. Um, because like you say, it's gonna be very, very dense, but it works very well. Those mares that have got tight cervix and the pool fluid, just try this 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 way uh, that we can we can yeah. do. Um, the other way is that I think we're gonna show it in the presentation, but you put a small dose in Effendoff tube sometimes, do you, Bart? Yeah, I send it away like this because I yeah. try to send with the straw, but in the straw, it don't work very well. We travel with it to, uh, to our farm in Leibitz about three hours, and then it's almost dead. But in this Eppendorf, you that is uh, about one and a half ml, so it's almost three straws. So uh, three times uh, 100 in one straw. So it's almost, it's between 200 and, two, and 300 uh, million of, of um, semen in, in this Eppendorf. And we send it away to the customers, to the vets who know how to work with this for the deep insemination. And we have super good uh, pregnancy rate with this. Yeah, we've done a little bit. Desiree, have you done this method at all or not? Yeah, by Bart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a great teacher, Bart, yeah. yeah uh, I mean, but... a bit. We, we, we're going to talk about this a bit more, I must admit, upstairs. But yeah, you've done it a bit, Desiree, have you? Yeah, yeah. And it's a very good method. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, a lot of people... Uh, again, when you're putting your fresh or chilled semen doses, we're going to talk about all dose rates and everything when we get upstairs. It's just much easier to explain on a, on a PowerPoint. But a lot of people send it away in syringes, and some people, uh, I think, send it away a lot in test tubes, um, especially overnight. And uh, do you ever send these away overnight, or is it just same day, Bart? 
No, overnight. Overnight. Over uh, this this colleague of you, Michaela, I I, I know her also. <laughs> Uh, if she has problem smears, she specially asked me to send it disconcentrate in the small tube. And I send yeah. it always overnight. Oh. And it's, it works very, very well. Yeah. And, 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 and you think this would work with those mares that where you're putting, instead of putting 40 mils of chilled semen in and, and putting too much into the mare's uterus, you think this, this, this works uh, sometimes really good for these mares? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There are a lot of people who say my mare has problems with the extender. Uh, that I don't believe, but yeah, this, this is something that's in the head of the breeders. Uh, and then we do with a slow dose, and the mares are pregnant, and there's still some extender, but yeah, uh, much yeah. less than normal. So we're going to talk about that a bit later, but talking about extenders, um, our other sponsor tonight is, is Spervatil. Uh, and they've got a whole range of extenders that they use, uh, not just for uh, fresh semen, not just for chilled semen, but they even got extenders for frozen semen. So they hold a whole range of these. And, and I know, Bart, you use uh, some of these. We use some of these as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and I th think they, they've got a whole range that really suits all different styles. They also do quite good playing cards as well. I don't know whether, if you, if, if you had any of these, Bart, Oh yeah, but I give them away because I buy quite a lot of this, so I get a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I never, but, I, I will give it away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Spur Vidal, well, thank, thank you very much for sponsoring tonight. Really appreciate it. We've got a short video, not now though, not yet, not just yet, but we'll show you that in a minute. But they do a whole range of uh, different extenders for, for people's needs for, for that. Um, we've got another poll question um, for everybody. Do you um, check for motility of your samples before insemination or do you just put it straight in the mare when it arrives at your place? Do you ever check the semen um, uh, just before insemination or just after insemination or do you put it in blind? It's always quite interesting to know on, on that side of things. So well, that's going it. So have we got a have we got the hemis have we got hemis tonsil? Can you set that up for us, Dan? Um, the other thing that we haven't uh, talked about is we talked a little bit about working out concentrations. Um, there are different ways of working out concentrations. You can use obviously use the ice sperm. Some people use mini tube. Mini tube do uh, fantastic products, uh, and one of the products is uh, the spermicube. This is quite an old one. Um, just remember with these methods, they're photometric methods, so they can only be used on raw semen. Um, and even the same with any CASA system, as soon as you go over about 250 million sperm per mil, uh, the accuracy really goes uh, outside the parameters. So like with all these, they work very well from about 100 million to 250 or 300 million. But outside that, the parameters change. So you cannot use these with extenders because what they do is they shine light uh, through this hole here. And the amount of light that goes through the other side is what measures how much semen's there. So if it's extender, they're going to count the extender as, as uh, uh, a, a semen. So only can you use that for all. And yep. you have to wash your stallion very, very well. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the, the yeah. light is not going through. Yeah, because the dirt in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the other the other way of doing uh, semen analysis is using a hematotometer. Uh, and, and Pam's put this one ready for us. So if you can see on this slide up here, it's a bit, it's dense. On, Sorry. It's a bit dense. This but uh, uh, it's like it's virtually the gold standard of analysing semen. So you have uh, sixteen squares here. And what you have to do is count the sperm cells in all these 16 squares. Um, and you need to count at least five different 16 squares together to get uh, the millions per mil. Desiree, do you use this much, uh, the, um, um, the hematometer, or do you do a different method? Yeah, early I use a lot of, uh, a lot of these. We call that in the Netherlands, we call that the Burgerkirk. And uh, <laughs> it's a strange word, I understand, but the, I have right now, the Burger Turk, I don't know, it's Dutch, 
And um, but I use right now the ice firm, but I uh, I like this one because he's very uh, accurate. He's very yeah. very yeah. exactly very good, and that is the, uh, absolutely. Can you thoughts and process? Just thoughts. Uh, is, is Desiree is absolutely spot on there. Uh, this is like the gold standard of uh, yeah. doing um, semen counts, but you've got to get your pipetting right. If you don't pipette right, your semen is not going to, uh, you're, not, you're going to get the wrong valuation, but it is the gold standard. So what you do is you count the 16 squares. You shouldn't really count the one next to it, but you count the one further away. You count another uh, 16 squares and then you do that five times and, you, uh, and you're meant to there's another set of grids the other side of the slide you're meant to count both of those and take an average between the two to get your millions per mil and it is a very good way of calibrating any uh, um, um, yeah but there is a formula I can always send you the formula uh, and just remember you know obviously Try and stay in touch with us a lot of time. We're always on Facebook. Please like us on Facebook on Stallion AI Services. And, and uh, we're always out there to try and try and help you. Is this one ready to, is this? So we just thought, I think Pam's just thought some out. Oh, the results are in. Oh, the results are in. 76% yes. So, yeah. And 24% no. Yeah, so 26 percent don't analyze semen. All that I would try and encourage you, sorry, can you set that up for us, Pam? I would just try and encourage you to try to, because the problem if you don't analyze semen, um, if you go two or three cycles and find that mare doesn't get in fold, then you find out the semen's no good. You, you know, you could have maybe sorted it out right at the beginning. So I think it is important to try and analyze semen, but it is important to analyze it properly. We hear so many times that people looking at semen not on warm stages, uh, not using maybe out of date slides, which I learned tonight from Desiree, which is good. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's, I did, we had this one uh, client, they said the semen, you said was no good. And I went up to their place and the slides were all covered in dust. And so it's really important, that they're all kept clean. So as long as you analyze it correctly, and hopefully you've learned that tonight and how we can analyze it. Uh, on there correctly. So we're just, yeah. So this is some semen that Pam's just thawed out. She just thawed some frozen semen out. Can you carry on with the analysis? So if you, um, so if you have a look on the, on the slide, on the screen there, um, you can have a look. And this is some uh, semen that we just thawed out. Um, and we can do a, uh, a quality control check. We can do a, a concentration, we can do a viability and everything else on this sample. The other thing that we do do with our semen assessments is um, we actually do a, um, uh, we always do a swab of every sample. Um, so we actually dip one of these loops into the semen and we actually make a, um, a swab of the sample just to check nothing grows. We just do that in house and it's just another fail safe way to making sure that there's no bacteria growing in that sample as well. So the, the way it goes, we, we've thought the semen out, we do a motility, progressive motility, viability, we do a, a, a stain on that, um, uh, we, uh, uh, smear stain on that blood agar plate, and then we actually do um, morphology as well. So that's the sort of whole criteria right the way through on there. Um, the other thing that we actually can shine in here on this particular stallion, you can see we do extended tests to find out what stallion uh, it, it, it's best for. So if you see on here, we tried INRA, Spur Vital Red, Spur Vital Blue, Spur Vital Green, Hipex, uh, and INRA. This is our own special medium that we make up. It's called SSPR, which stands for Synthetic Seminal Plasma Replacement. And you can see the best one here that's come out is actually Spur vital red, uh, followed closely by INRA, uh, and then the blue, it didn't do so well in the green, and it did pretty well in the HIPEX, did very well in the HIPEX, and the other one. So we always said beginning of the season, you want to try all these to try and find out what the best extender is uh, for that semen sample. Now I think we might just have to head upstairs actually, Pam. Oh, yeah. Um, and because uh, we're, we're moving on, we've got a lot more to do. Have we covered everything, Pam, in here? 
Pam, uh, just to, is basically, I have to thank Pam. She set up everything tonight here. She does all our semen assessments and, and looks at everything. So I feel a bit of a fraud talking all about this, but Pam's very much set everything up tonight and, and uh, makes sure uh, that the semen, when it leaves here, goes out at a certain quality. Um, and I think we've pretty much covered it. We're gonna go upstairs now. Um, just to say that we do provide a semen assessment service, anything from uh, 100 pounds upwards, we can do obviously all these uh, assays in here and, and assessments on the semen, uh, be it viability, morphology and, and, and so on. Um, we're gonna talk a bit more about the optimal sperm dose upstairs now, so please don't go away. Uh, is there any last questions before we go upstairs? We've got loads of questions. We can't cover them all, but um, yeah, we've got, we've got one from um, Mark Spallart actually. Oh, Mark. Brilliant. Well, our friend Mark, I must admit, we have a, a, a really good sort of styling group between us and Mark and Bart and Michaela, and, and uh, he would be one of the most leading uh, um, stallion people in France. So, uh, yeah. yeah. He said, um, if you just have one straw and practice deep insemination, oh. you can't check the most Yeah, of yeah the he, he, he is right on that one. It's a very, it is a tricky one. And I have to admit, if you've got one straw, it, you, you're absolutely spot on. Uh, is there anything you think you can, you, there's nothing you can do without Bart, is there? Or Desiree? Yeah, well, if you do the low doses, like what Bart does, and you, you, uh, you take there the straw off, you can check the motility, of course, before it's going into the straw. If you do it directly like you did, under, uh, then, then you're so concentrated, I don't think you can yeah. check it. Yeah. But and if you, you do it like it. Bart, yeah, you can check, of course, it's no problem. Yeah, and you have to trust, you're right, with these, with the one straws and it's like, yes, you have to trust that the people that's frozen it and Mark, you're actually spot on on that, yeah. yeah. Right, so we answer them upstairs, I appreciate it. Time's moving on, and as always, we seem to go on forever. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do is put a short, uh, I'm literally gonna nip upstairs and we're gonna do a, a PowerPoint presentation where we talk, talk about sperm numbers and what should be in each dose when we inseminate a mare. Um, but there's going to be a short video now, all about Spur Vital, uh, for literally two minutes. So I'll see you in two minutes if you can if you can play that, uh, Rika. And we thank you, Pam, for being with us tonight. So I think you're going to head off. And thanks very much for putting this together. Have I missed anything off down here? I feel like there's so much to cover. I always think we're never going to have enough to talk about, but there's always too much. Right. We'll see you upstairs, Rachel. If you can play that, please. You can hear me now. Ja, we kunnen je nu horen. Ja, we gaan een korte video maken. Het recept van de Spervital EVD Excellent voor Dunner geeft door middel van speciale ingrediënten extra bescherming aan hengstensperma. Het is een heldere verdunner waardoor je nauwkeurig kunt werken na het centrifugeren. Voor het gebruik in kaasa-systemen is het een prettige verdunner, aangezien hierin vrijwel geen deeltjes te vinden zijn. Er kan een nauwkeurigere analyse gemaakt worden dan bij het gebruik van eigeelverdunners. EVD Excellent werkt fijn in combinatie met OptiPrep of Equipure tijdens het centrifugeren. EVD Excellent wordt hier vergeleken met de EVD en de EVD Plus. Nadat het sperma gevangen is, wordt het één op één verdund. In het centrifugeerbuisje wordt OptiPrep met een lange naald onderin de buizen gebracht. OptiPrep geeft bescherming aan spermatozoa, waardoor er op een hogere g-waarde gecentrifugeerd kan worden. Vrijwel alle zaadcellen komen hierdoor onder in de buis precies bovenop de OptiPrep te liggen. Na 10 minuten centrifugeren wordt de bovenlaag afgezogen en wordt met een knopnaald de OptiPrep weggehaald. Hierna kan de EVD Excellent toegevoegd worden en kan men verder gaan met de gebruikelijke procedure. EVD Excellent kan gebruikt worden voor verzendsperma en als centrifugeerverdunner voor de invriesprocedure. U ziet dat de EVD Excellent zich onderscheidt in helderheid. U kunt de EVD Excellent herkennen aan zijn gelige transparante kleur en de fles met de gele dop. Het wordt geleverd in flesjes van 100 ml. Eenmaal ontdooid is deze verdunner een week houdbaar in de koelkast. Probeer het uit en u zult aangenaam verrast zijn over de EVD Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Thank you for um, putting that on, um, Rachel. Right, I'm just going to, Rachel, you might just have to let me know um, the slideshow. 
I better sh I'm going to share my screen first, haven't I? So uh, that's the one we want to share it on. Uh, and then we want to insert in the slideshow. Can we see that okay? Yeah, yeah that looks good. Good, right. So just to uh, start with, uh, yes, it's. hope you've all enjoyed it. We've got a huge lot of people again tonight. Unbelievable. So I really appreciate it. We've got so many questions. We will try and endeavour, if we can't answer them tonight, to get back to you, as many of you as, as we can. And just remember, please uh, uh, sign up to uh, our thing on Facebook for Stallion AI and British Breeding. And, uh, and obviously, just remember, you know, Bart and, and, and Desiree, they've got such a wealth of knowledge. And if you want their details, uh, Bart's fantastic at obviously Stallion handling and doing all that side of it. And, uh, and, and, and Desiree's brilliant, obviously, on the freezing side as well. And I just love setting up the labs. So if there's any lab setups or you want any more advice, please, it never stops here, the webinar, pick up the phone, uh, WhatsApp me or text us and we can carry on this. And there's a whole host of webinars talking about this. So this um, presentation is a few slides to get through. We're going to brush through some of these because we talked about the equipment already. Semen assessment, new techniques for uh, looking at semen and evaluation. And what is that optimal sperm dose? Um, just got to thank the sponsors again. Uh, without them, we couldn't put this on tonight. Spur Vitel and Chemotech, it really does make a big difference to say we, there's no, you don't pay to go on these things. No one gets paid to go on this and we just appreciate all uh, the time. So without you, we could not put these on. But also I just got to thank the two people on tonight. We've got Bart. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I miss your picture actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Desiree here. Well, she's I think doing a bit epididable, got a testicle in, in, in one hand there. Um, but yeah, honestly, I, I'm not just saying this, you could not get two bigger experts uh, in, the, in the stallion side of the industry. Uh, there's nothing that these two people don't know about semen assessment. There really isn't. So I thank you both for coming tonight and, and giving your input because it's an hour ahead in, in, uh, in, in, uh, well, in, it's an honor to join you, uh, like your dream team boys. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so really just going to brush through some of these slides because I think some of them we know already. Um, but obviously doing a semen assessment for AI, basically we want to, uh, we want to look at the visual appearance of the ejaculate, the volume of the ejaculate, uh, the cell total progressive motility, the density, the viability, which we talked about, and the morphology and the bacterial contamination when we do that swab. Um, and some of the equipment that we need, uh, you saw tonight when we're analyzing seeing a set of scales. If you just take one tip away from any of this, I think I hope it's been worth watching. Just weigh your samples as they come in. It will give you a much, much, more accurate way of analyzing semen. Uh, getting, having a microscope uh, so you can look at your total progressive motility, making sure that microscope's got a warm stage on your pipettes. Remember, 10 microliters. Analyzing cell counting, a hematotometer, uh, eye sperm, spermacule, or nuclear cell counter, and then looking at stains. So coming back to the scales, we, would, we were saying uh, we weigh all the samples and yes, so you can see here, it's exactly 65 mils. So you know you've got 65 mils. And as Bart was saying, uh, the Dixon Varner, um, he, he was the one that taught us all about this. One gram equals one mil. And it's a very, very accurate. When we do, I do quite a lot of canine stuff and they might only give us after centrifugation 0.23 of a mil. So this is where it has to be really, really accurate when you're, when you're analyzing these uh, samples. Microscopes, yes, you need some way of uh, analyzing the semen. It's good if you've got a phase contrast microscope, it gives you a, a really good image of the sperm cells. And as I say, I keep coming back to, and I think Bart was saying the same, is using your eyes to analyze semen. I don't know, I, just, I can tell whether that semen, just by looking at it on the screen, I think, uh, Desiree be the same. You can just tell whether it's been shocked or, or, or what state that semen is just by looking how well it moves, how fast it's moving and how it's going through uh, uh, on, on the slide. And we want to look at oil immersion and obviously a warm stage as well. Uh, pipettes, we want to be looking at 10 microliters. And as um, uh, James was pointing out before, yes, we want to be looking 
for a 10 microliter drop, it's 22 by 22. And Bart, I think you use six, six microliters, is that right? Yeah, uh, six microliters, but uh, my um, slice is, is 18 by 18, not 22. And I, and I can probably- not, My boss has not this much money, so he has <laughs> more <one. laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> can you, you, that means you could, those probably four, four bits on the slide then. Yeah. <laughs> You can get, but um, all these tiny little tips, I promise you, will make a huge, huge difference. Like we, we did a whole webinar on about washing the stallion off and collecting off the stallion. All these collective little things can make a big difference. Uh, the hemocytometer, um, I think, yes, we, we spoke about that. And the ranges, as I was saying about these, um, these photometric methods, yes, the ranges are okay. And even the CASA systems, if you were to put semen in a, in a in a ice berm that's maybe 400 million or 500 it might give you 100 percent because it just physically cannot count the sperm cells on top of each other it just leaves sees as a big mass so you need to dilute it out somebody asked me the other day how do we do that uh, because they were analyzing canine semen which sometimes can be one billion per mil so we just said you literally get 10 microliters of the semen you get 100 microliters of of, of uh, extender Diluted out ten to one, and then just uh, times your um, your your calculations up by ten. So um, you can use the nuclear cell counter, which I think is a, a fantastic bit of kit. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsored tonight. It really is. Uh, if you're doing a lot of freezing, uh, it, it's just a fantastic bit of kit to do concentration and cell viability. And I say this is how it works. So for um, looking and just looking at the dead cells, it permeates uh, the cell membrane, exposes the nucleus, and then we do another stain which only permeates the, 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 uh, the non viable cells, and that way it can cross reference and tell you what's viable. And, uh, uh, and I, I know coming back to you, Bart, again, but I think you, you really like using this machine and find it really works well with fertility. Is that right? Yeah, I cannot work without. Yeah, I never work without it. For each sample that we make from each stallion every day, uh, we use it. No, I think it's a, always. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are other CASA systems out there, uh, the Hamilton Thorn and and and, and the Androvision. This is a mini two product. It's a, it's a really that the two differences is that that the, the um, that some are open systems. And this is an open system of a CASA system for mini two. And this is, you know, they're really, really good bits of kit. Obviously, it's slightly more pricier, but they, they really give you a very accurate measurement of, um, of how good that semen is. And it can give you a hot... And these are always being updated all the time. That's the beauty about these, these CASA systems. Um, and we've got the Hamilton Thorn one. And this is the one we've got downstairs. And this, again, can give you whether the sperm's going round in circles. And as I said, Desiree alluded to this before. Little circles we, we don't like, big circles we don't mind uh, so bad. And there's, uh, we actually uh, now have one of these you see available um, at our center. So when we're analyzing semen, we can hopefully give even more accurate results on our post store. We've got the ice berm that we're talking about. It can do progressive. Just on the progressive, all I say is there's, it will only do progressive from about 80 million sperm cells below. If you try and work this machine and do progressive motility or do total motility if it's over 100 million um, but it won't give you progressive because it's just you just got to think this machine physically can't do it it can't analyze semen over the top of each other so you dilute it out and then amazingly for i, th I think for eight seventeen hundred pound i think this is one amazing bit of kit desiree you've used it a bit haven't you I love the ice cream. I really do. I love the ice cream. I'm on the road uh, most of the times and it's easy to travel and I can put it out everywhere I am. And he's very accurate. The concentration is, is almost similar to the nuclear counter. It's really, really good. Uh, the motility rate and progressive and like what you said, you can even watch uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the straightness, uh, the velocity, uh, if you uh, extend it very more, you can um, maybe you can show. Can you show it? That you yeah, you see it under the a few under it, yeah. And you see the progressive rate, and you can see what's slow, and you can see what's moving uh, progressive. You can see what's moving uh, motile. 
you can see what's moving slow. And um, yeah, I really love the iceberg. Yeah. It's great for Very, Just let me Yeah, know. it's fantastic. Yeah. Would you use the iceberg for a chilled assessment? So someone's just asked, would we use semen for, yes. And, and I, what I didn't yes. show, there's so much to talk about tonight and I appreciate, I'm always amazed where the time goes, but uh, we're up to 96 questions now. So we don't worry, we're not gonna do them all tonight, but um, make, it's got a warming device on there, hasn't it Desiree, the ice sperm? So you can actually warm the sample. Yeah, I, uh, I always do the warming uh, device on it because I think it's very important that the sample is warm. And uh, also, and let them uh, warm up a little bit. It's always, you can see the difference if you watch cold semen and if you wait a little while that it's warming up, it's much better. Yeah. And uh, always use the warming device. Yeah. yeah. So you can, yeah, chill semen. And the, there is other bits of kit out there, flow cytometers, which can analyze semen. Obviously, there's a, there's a more technically advanced use of these machines. You have to be quite expert to use them. But these can look at the capacitation process, the acrosome integrity, and, and so on, an awful lot more. So semen evaluation, um, just you know, what we're looking for is sort of the, the total volume. As I said before, we want to look at the color, concentration, motility, total and progressive, um, velocity, uh, the pH, the, uh, and, and so on. So the first thing that we, we look at, as we were saying with, with Desiree and, and, and Bart, they were saying the color tells you an awful lot. And, and, and quite often we can get a normal color um like Shirley I like was saying if it's a bit gray if it's a bit dirty I'm not saying it Stanley hasn't been washed off but washing off will usually reduce that and you can see it on the slide as well you can get a blocked ampullae uh this is where a Stanley's been blocked for a while and suddenly releases and it looks very very thick you can get samples that are very watery uh, and then obviously you can get blood and, and urine uh do you get have you seen much of the the urine in in your samples do you have much of a problem uh, Desiree with this yeah, I had one stallion who always did it. So we uh, we let him loose uh, early in the morning. We cut off the stable, put him back in the stable, wait till he urinates, and then we collect him. So that's it's the management that we work on. And I had one stallion. Uh, he didn't um, he didn't urinate in uh, due calculation, but he was so excited that a few drops always put he had in. So and, and, the bottle was not full of urine, but it was only a few drops, so you can smell it. Hmm. And it was a little bit yellow, and you can smell it. Well, if you work them very quickly, and you, you want to save the semen because you don't have time, and the transport is waiting, or the mares is waiting, if you work very quickly, you extend it directly, you put it in the centrifuge for only one minute. You know, urine is very uh, heavy, so it's going down directly, and you take off the rest, the semen and the extender, and you go on the centrigate that again, then you can save the semen and the stallion doesn't have to collect again. So that's a thing to work on. Uh, and Bart, have you, do, do you have any stallions that urinate sometimes or? Sorry? Didn't do you have any stallions that urinate at all or in samples? Have you seen this much or not? Uh, some, sometimes, uh, especially stallions um, who have been written and then they were not long enough in the stable. Sometimes it happens, yeah. You have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at the end, you know which stallions will do this, and then you put them in a stable for ten minutes. You have an eye on them that they uh, make uh, make their urine, and then yeah. you take it out and you start working. It, 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 it can be quite a problem. We've just had one in recent, well, I say about four months ago. We have a few stallions that urinate now and again. Uh, and this particular stand, we got him into a certain routine. We found that uh, we had to watch him urinate. We put him out in the field quite often. For some reason, he, he never, he didn't do much urinating in the field. But as soon as we brought him to the field, as soon as he went to a stable, he urinated. And then we collected straight away. And and uh, and, and it's uh, it can be a real problem with some stallions uh, that they're just constantly urinating, and it's uh, can be a real issue. But that's one thing we quite often do. So looking at the parameters, we've talked about the parameters. Yeah, the average stallion gives you roughly 40 to 50 mils, but I, I must admit, I don't really mind a stallion giving me 10 mils, as long as the concentration is, is there and the sperm cells are there. And I don't know whether you notice this, Bart or Desiree, but I find in the, in the winter time, we tend to get a lower concentration, uh, sorry, a lower, yeah, lower volume, but a higher concentration, yeah. sorry. <laughs> and, in, and in the summer, we have a larger volume, but lower concentration. Do you, some, do you, do you see that sometimes? Exactly the same. Yeah. Good. 
Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> but, uh, so I and therefore I don't know what I find sometimes in the winter time, as long as it's not too cold, the stallions sometimes actually freeze better in the winter because you get this lower volume, not so much seminal fluids mixed in with the semen, and it's just a product that is sometimes just not we're only talking tiny margins can just be easier to handle and process and freeze than in the summer they might give you a large amount the testosterone levels are up so um yeah um, so um motility yeah well, ideally we want at least 35 percent above but ideally over 50 percent when we're looking at these samples uh we want to obviously just on recording you saw our spreadsheets we've actually got a, a huge software package now called saint which stands for stallion AI, um, new technologies, that's it. Uh, and so we put the old system, we did it all on those spreadsheets that you saw. So you want to record all that. And um, it is a subject to evaluation. What, you know, I said it was about 75 and I think the CASA system said it was about 85. Um, but as long as we're with in a certain um, parameters, that we, 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 you know, we're usually within five or 10%. So we look at semen quality uh, and motility, we talked about the progressive motility and uh, samples that like this sample just doesn't obviously look, look good at all. Um, you know, this would obviously be a fail, but I'm always surprised sometimes these ones still get mares in fold. We had a, a stallion once that the semen quality was, was barely 15%. It failed everything, but we couldn't get it to improve. We, sent, we gave it to the stallion owner at, uh, at six draws per dose. Uh, and uh, he, he the, the, something happened to the stallion, so then he had to just use uh, the straws. Nearly every mare went in fault. In the end, he used two straws with motility at 15%, and they still got in fault, which always amazed me. So there's always going to be that odd stallion that's going to be like that. Um, and then you get the ones that sometimes look like this. Now, I don't know whether you've seen these Bart or Desiree, where you think, wow, these look amazing, but for some reason, they get nothing in fault. Mm -hmm. and uh and uh i think sometimes that whether they're sort of going through a hyperventilation sort of stage uh and uh, uh but generally yes we've got to have good motility good morphology to get the results but just sometimes we still get these really good stallions and i we scratch our heads and we don't know why they don't yeah i good. totally agree i had one stallion it was a young stallion actually and the offspring was from a very fertile stallion and um and um, everything was fine. The motility rate was 75%. The morphology rate was around 70. He was really good. He said very good concentration, nice volume. The total sperm count was, was perfect. So um, on the end, you look at the report and you say, okay, well, this stallion must be so fertile. I think he covered around 100 mares and he didn't have one pregnancy, yeah. not one. And so right now, we, at that time, we didn't know what it was. If it, if it was the stallion who was living right now, you should say, okay, check him on DNA fragmentation. And I'm quite sure it's, yeah, that, that there's something to do with this. There's a chromatine is something was not good because you can't see that on the motility and you can't see that on the morphology. Yeah, no, I agree on that. No, I definitely. And this is just to show you, this is one, this is a sample. Um, oh, giving away my, anyway, yeah, I was gonna, is, is that, the, the bit was not meant to come from at the end. I was meant to ask the question. This is all the same collection. It's three different droplets uh, on the slide. And this is why we always, when we do our post store, we always put three droplets down. And I think uh, Mark Spellar, you obviously hopefully watching. I think you do the same thing where you put different droplets because sometimes, for, I don't know why, but sometimes a different droplets can, can look slightly, uh, slightly different. So we always look at three doing our post store, uh, I must admit. Um, I think it's really yeah, can important. Can I say uh, one thing? I, I learned it from somebody who works a lot with cows. And they said, uh, with frozen semen, we always do the stress test. So we check the semen. And OK, of course, several times. But then we wait for 10 or 20 minutes on 37 degrees. And we checked it again, just to see how it stays after 20 minutes, how the frozen semen is after 10, 20 minutes. And it's very fascinating to see sometimes what yeah. kind of difference in quality you can have. And I know Mark does that. He mixes it with a bit of uh, Inra or a bit of, no, but actually I think he uses a bit of skim milk, but he was with an extender. And then he looks yeah. it after 30, we look at it after an hour. So we look at it, we call it T0, and then we took T60, and we see where there's a much of a drop off. 
Yeah. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, obviously uh, the importance of flushing stallions out. So the agglutination of the, these um, sperm cells, if they haven't been washed off properly, the sperm cells stick to them. And also uh, if they're not, and we, uh, we always say, especially in the, the older stallion, this is, this is important. Obviously morphology, we said really is so important. <laughs> You can have uh, uh, the, the best semen in the, in the world, but if the morphology is no good, it's not going to get anything in full. So in other words, it could have the best motility, but if the morphology is not good. And this is where we all think, you know, morphology really is king. That's going to tell you whether that mare uh, is going to really get in full with that semen or not. And we say we look at the, uh, the good sperm cells uh, and ones with, uh, they've got a live, but they've got a, a bent tail, or if they're morphologically okay we look at uh, um, uh, 100 of these and then go back and look at another 100 of the live ones and that can tell us morphologically how good they are um, and nigrosy and ears and stains are very easy stain to work with so we look at normal sperm cells proximal droplets um, i think sometimes the proximal droplets uh, conference different conferences different people say different things whether these should be classed as abnormal or normal uh, and the droplets are normally just behind the head or the mid piece. Uh, and, but we do usually count these as abnormal uh, proximal droplets. And sometimes it begins sign of an overworked stallion and it's been overworked too much. And, and distal droplets are just behind the mid piece. And we actually count these as normal in the stallions. So if we're doing morph morphology. We can actually look at these and differentiate bet between the two. Uh, ones with uh, bent tails, and as Desiree was alluding to earlier, uh, the stress sometimes of the sperm's being put on the stress, it can cause these swellings, and this is what can make the sperm cells go round and round in circles. So cold shock, or um, uh, heat shock, even, or uh, the way it's been handled, or water contamination uh, can cause this. It's not always, but can cause it. So this is how the sort of the sperm cells. Um, uh, journey of life, you could say, and depending on where it is, you can actually see whether if there's any sort of, um, you know, if you get premature germ cells, which sort of look like just round blobs, uh, quite, that can be, not always, can be, come back to testicular uh, and dysfunction. Uh, if you get a lot of uh, detached heads, sometimes this can be a blocked and pulley. Uh, and then other trauma, especially like inflammation, uh, and, and so on can actually cause a lot of issues with the seam side. Uh, uh, so um, sort of an abnormal mid-piece uh, can re uh, reduce uh, longevity as well. So you can learn an awful lot by just looking at that sperm cell, seeing the abnormality, and then you can, it's like a forensic scientist. You can sort of say, well, actually, that's most probably because it's been overworked. That's most probably because it's had a, could have a, a fever a while ago. That could be uh, um, because um, it, it's too stressed out or it's had some contamination. So you can just look at a sample and it can give you a bit of an idea what is wrong with that stallion sometimes. There are lots of other abnormalities which could be genetic. So we know in some of the rare breeds, inbreeding can cause uh, issue with semen. They can, the testicles on some of these big heavy horses should be really, really big. And actually they're very small and this can be the inbreeding issues associated and this can be down to the genetic links uh, for these uh, stallions causing uh, the issues with the subfertile stallion. So ideally we say before we really want a minimum ideally of more 50 percent morphologically normal sperm cells. So what is normal and it, there's always ones that are going to trip you up. Um, so you can see here this stallion here has 29 percent uh, normal sperm cells um, and uh, I don't know whether it shows it on here but both the, and this has 71 percent but both these have very similar pregnancy results so you can see here it's got a lot of proximal droplets so obviously the proximal droplets on this particular standard did not affect its semen uh, quality and getting those mares in foal so yes it, morphology is, is a big key but there's still a lot of the unknown that we don't know about this is a, uh, um, uh, a project that uh, Jay Morrell did and just shows here actually how it does work. So you've got the motility here of 57%, but uh, this one here, the motility is 73%, but actually the morphology on this one is only uh, 
uh, normal. And you can see the pregnancy results really do match uh, the, the, the morphologically uh, abnormal sperm cells. So again, it's going back to what Desiree and Bart were saying, morphology, morph morphology is, is, is plays such a big part in knowing how good that semen is going to work or not work. Um, the other things that we use here, we use uh, live dead, we use fluorescence, prepared in iodide, and we can actually look at the live dead. So it gives us, instead of looking where well, it's taken up the stain, we can very easily look at the ones that are glowing uh, green, mean they're alive, and the ones that are red are dead. So it's a very easy way for us to distinguish what is live and dead, and we can look at other, other things as well. So advanced semen technologies, there's lots of assays out there. I was, we, these were all on there, but I've taken them all. They take all night to go through. But there's so many different things and assays that we can look at sperm morphology to try and ascertain um, uh, how good or bad it is. But what the true, true test is, I hope, I don't know whether you both agree is, but the true test on fertility is the mare at the end of the day. Uh, that's the one key uh, component of this. So what is the optimal sperm dose? How much should we be putting in to these, these mares? And in order to realize this true stallion's breeding potential, obviously we've got to really understand and to ascertain the number of mares he can breed naturally a cover or artificial in each season. So we wanna know how much he's giving us, what the semen quality is like and what the optimal sperm dose is for that stallion. As we all know, it only takes one sperm cell to get a mare in foal. Um, but we do need a certain amount of these sperm cells to making sure that he's going to ascertain or get good uh, fertility at the end of the, end of the day. So any questions coming up? Or? Yeah, I'm just sending a... Uh, oh, you're, oh, you're busy, busy. <laughs> going. So when I looked into this, we looked into uh, different, about six different EU centres, and it was quite interesting. I did this project quite a few years ago, and we looked at, they look after about 350 different stallions, and there was quite a difference between what the different centers um, um, put in as a, a fresh semen dose. So the World Breeding Federation recommends a minimum of 300 uh, million progressively motile sperm for a fresh semen dose. And it varied massively at these EU centers, everything from 150 million to 500 million uh, progressively motile sperms. Uh, but the minimum quality uh, was 35%. Uh, so, um, but the sort of industry standard is saying that really, if you are trying to find a benchmark, really you want to be putting in a minimum of, of 300 million uh, sperm cells. Uh, that's the World Breeding Federation. Is the, do you, I mean, how do you to set a guideline on this part? Because obviously you will know that some stallions you can get away with maybe 100 million and some you, you need obviously a bit more. So you know your stallions well, so I suppose you send out what you know works, is that right? Yeah, we, send, we, we make a few things. First, we look uh, who gets the semen. Um, is it the mare who is in my stable? Then we do only with 100 million. Is it the customer who is come, picks up, go home and do the insemination? Then it's okay to give them two or 300. But if we know we ship overnight, uh, we give five or 600. And then it depends on the stallion. Is he uh, super good and something about 70, 80%? Okay, we can leave it five to 600. If we know his uh, morphology and his pregnancy rate of fertility is not that good, we go up to uh, uh, seven, eight, 900 uh, million uh, to send away overnight. So therefore we make, uh, thank Mr. Samper, you know him, yeah. uh, we make now a list of all our stallions and uh, with the morphology. And we know exactly what we have in the beginning of the year. And if there are some stallions who go out of this, so that seems that they make no pregnancy or bad rates or something like this, we make morphology again and then we can see, okay, this happens with the stallion or this, and then we can change the, the, the dose how we need. So there are a few things we have to think about, but yeah. I think most of the time, it's not only the dose of the semen, I think it's also very, very important. And there, uh, all the vets have to work 
really exactly to see uh, with the breeders if the mares are really clean and finishing or also on the right time. Sometimes they order for 10, 15 day semen. Why? It's too early, too late. Too... So this is a point, yeah, it's difficult, but yeah, that's a big point, I think, in the breeding uh, season, especially with fresh semen. Yeah, yeah. Or chilled uh, semen. So, I mean, this is just a fresh stallion, uh, and you can see this stallion, uh, you know, really his pregnancy results when he was given 300 million, uh, um, it was really very poor. Um, and he was just a, a strange stallion that we really had to be giving an awful lot more sperm cells to get the pregnancy results anywhere near uh, what we would like. But as soon as we put it up to sort of 1500, it made absolutely no difference uh, at all uh, with this. So, and that's the average stallion is going to be around about the 300. But this one, we nearly had to give a billion uh, to get any, any results or any decent results at all. Yeah. The, the, the fresh semen volume dose uh, uh, is, is changes from anything from half a mil straw uh, to 40 mil. But Bart, I'm going to let you sort of take this away now. Um, Desiree's very kindly sent me this uh, these slides. And this just, um, we don't want to spend too long, but if I go through this, you can just explain exactly what you're doing here, Bart. And tell me when to go on to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so this is just the beginning. We measure the semen. Um, or, and then after uh, we make one, uh, I think the second one is just how we fill it up to put in the centrifuge. Then yeah. we do the centrifugation. Yeah. And then after the centrifuge, so you see that the centrifugation. And then after the centrifugation, um, we take, uh, I don't know what she did all the time, but okay. We take some out for the measuring. In that you see the nuclear counter, and then we can continue. Um, and then we make uh, the the total amount what I get out of the uh, after centrifugation, um, the total volume against the concentration, so the total amount of sperm, and this I put then in one fifty ml tube. Uh, I count if I have. For example, five billion with half an ml, so I get uh, twenty-five milliliter of uh, semen um, to put in the refrigerator, and from this I can make my dose. So I have in each ml one hundred uh, million of some of sperm. So then I can make the dose like I want in a straw. It's one straw in the Eppendorf. It's only free Eppendorf. Or if I make it in a tube and I put five or six hundred, I take a little bit of extender. I have to look that this cold if it was in the refrigerator or it's warm, and then um, we can make the dose to five or six hundred, and uh, with three mLs we have six hundred, and then with the extender and then we give it away. Yeah. So this is your calculation that you've done here, I think, isn't it? After after the centrifugation, yeah, after yeah. To, yeah, to, yeah. To make my total amount of students, I know exactly what I have inside the the tubes who are in the refrigerator. Then, and there they are rolling in the refrigerator now, and then I can take out what I need. And you do the so same. This is what I say. It's just one straw. So we give away the vet in our place. They insinuate only like this. Only one straw finish uh, deep insemination, or we can do with the Eppendorf. Maybe it's the next one. Yeah, you see, there we take a little bit in a small Eppendorf, and the next one is uh, we do in a uh, 13 ml tube for shipment. So now I'm just explaining that we have to do, if we make the big dose, that we check that the, the extender is the same code as the semen is inside the free shape. Yeah. Otherwise you get problems. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same, it's the same temperature, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
and it's really oh, a little bit farmer. We've still got hundreds, literally, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people still watching this. And if there's anybody want to learn a bit more about this, I'd like to think, Bart, you're you're you know you're very open, and know Desiree is, and I know I am. We're more than here to to, to help uh, people uh, on on this side. So please do get in touch with us. Yeah, uh, we can help always, no problem. Yeah, yeah. But always. Not, yeah. not in the season. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now we can help, but not not from March to August, then yeah, it's yeah. not possible. So these are the three different samples that you can use, either the big tubes, the medium tubes, the little tubes, or the or the uh, straws. Yeah. yeah. Um, just saying that we did the same thing with uh, with this trial with Michaela. We diluted it one to one. A very We didn't know how much semen we were going there, but we spun down, literally sucked the, the semen up in a straw, and these mares with these tight cervixes, uh, and uh, we, we, we got some very, very dense semen. And then we literally did it by a DUI uh, with a mini tube catheter. Uh, we inseminated the mares. And this was the, 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 the scoring, what the Michaela did uh, with the, um, with the uh, mares before we used this. These were the age of the mares. This was what the cervix was like. And this was the amount of fluid that was measured on the scanner uh, and, uh, and all the lavages and everything they had to be done uh, with a conventional... Uh, I think it must be about 20 mils that was put into these mares. Um, this was on this, the, uh, I think it's two or three Easter cycles later when we couldn't get them for the same mares. Um, and I know sometimes these things, I hate seeing these things when they're too good to be true. Uh, but every single one of these mares got involved with a single straw. I suppose they could not, and the fluid was very, very minimal. And it's such an easy technique. If it's one thing you take away tonight, if you have a mare that you can centrifuge the seam that pulls fluid all the time, just try this method. It is so easy and it works so, so well for these. Uh, these. And as you see with Bart and Desiree, they send out these effing off tubes as well. Um, I do a little bit. I must admit, sometimes I feel not brave. I'm worried about people in this country if I do that and say they're not getting enough semen, but uh, it works very well. Oh, so yeah. Some, some people say this. Yeah. yeah, there are people. They say my mare is one meter eighty, so I need fifty cent, fifty milliliter of extender. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but will you say to this? But this, yeah. yeah, but that's what I say. Yeah. We have to work together with the vet that they uh, are sure that the mares are really good pro on the right time, the uh, as mm. clean as possible, everything fine. And then if we get good semen, then the pregnancy should work very easy, yeah. normally. And one thing yeah. I was, uh, was going to say is um, still a lot of people, one thing I want to ask, please send your emails to us and tell us what else you want to, to listen to, anything on the breeding side. We're more than happy to put more of these webinars on, but we'd love to hear your feedback. We really love to hear your feeback. Sorry, Kay. Um, just whilst we're on the topic of Effendorf, um, tubes. Um, Sarah asked the question, are you worried about the concentration in shipping Effendorf tubes overnight? Will the sperm have enough energy to survive? Did you get any of that, Bart? It's about no, I did. But, but again. The, the message was, it's from Sarah, she was saying, and I know what she means, is because normally we dilute the semen about 100 million per mil. With your Effendorf tubes, you're concentrating the sperm cells she says, is there still enough energy left in those sperm cells because they're not diluted out as much as they would be normally? Are they, yeah. still, are they still okay? Yeah, they are still super. That's why uh, we make the test. I sent, for example, um, in our farm in Levitz, uh, we sent overnight and they only do this and we have 1,600 mere pregnant. <laughs> so I, I was so it say... works, oh, it's, it's very easy. <laughs> It's not just two mares that you've done this on, Bart, and find it works. No, no, no. But, <laughs> so uh, that's really, really good. That's what I say. You cannot send by straw, but in the Eppendorf, it works really, really fine. I don't, I don't think there's many people in the world that can sort of say, well, we did 1,200 mares uh, with this method and it, and it worked well. So I think that's, 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 that's a pretty good advocate that says it works. So, yes, Sarah, it obviously works. Uh, it works well. Coming on to the chilled semen dose, again, the World Breeding Federation of Sports, they recommend a minimum of 600 million sperm cells to be sent out. And the way they thought of this is that if half of it die off, you still got that 300 million at time of inseminations. I know in this country, when we do a lot of the courses, we usually recommend 500 
million at point of insemination and a billion when we're sending it out uh, just to sort of be on the safe side. Um, but there will be a prediction. Um, and the data that we collect from EU centers was everything from 300 million up to uh, a billion sperm cells that were sent out for chilled semen. Again, with that minimum quality at point of insemination, really wants the minimum of 35%. And again, you see the, the, the stallions here. Um, you yeah, know, this one particular stallion, same one, needed to be sending out an awful lot more to get uh, the results. We had to actually do one and a half billion. And then some, as you'll see later, we could easily get away uh, with maybe 300 million, but it comes down to the, the specifics of the stallion. Uh, the, um, the chilled semen dose varies. And again, this is the Eppendorf tube that Bart was talking about here. Uh, he sends out a lot of European studs, send out these 10 mils. You still send them out like this, Bart, as well, don't you? Yeah, 13, 13 ml. Is it. 13 yeah, ml. We sent out because uh, the vets who are outside uh, on inseminate on the farms, they don't have a place. They just inseminate the stallions, in, uh, the mares in the stable. So there it's too dangerous to do with the small tubes because they have to, to, to put the mares in a stand and not, not just in the stable. So uh, therefore you, we send the normal dose, yeah. 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 But uh, if they want to, they can have the small doses. Mm -hmm. But that I want to say, um, not each stallion. So for example, if you have a stallion with 35 or 40%, Maybe, therefore, you have to give a little bit more and not only one yeah. and off. But the normal stands who are 50, 60 percent or more, no problem at all. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I see we're pressing on for time, but I must admit, we've still got hundreds and hundreds of people watching. So I think we'll keep pushing on. Um, frozen semen, the optimal sperm dose, the World Breeding Federation recommend a minimum of 250 million progressively motile sperm cells. That you and again, data from the EU census is anything from 150 million to 300 million. So it does vary from center to center. And some people have a minimum standard of 30%, some 35, but it's generally around the 30% uh, mark. And again, with this, with, with this one stallion, as you can see here, um, he needed to hit the sort of 350 before he would get anywhere. And this other stallion, you know, he could be down to 200 and even at a, 50 million sperm cell, he was still getting a strike rate per cycle of 57%. So you can see there's such a stallion variance, uh, but generally, yes, you, you need that two, 250. And you can see 250, when he went up to 250, there's very diff, uh, very little difference between his conception rates. There's only, well, it's only 2%. And actually, he only did a few mares that they gave him a bit more. And actually, um, it was just because they only did a small amount, they dropped. But so this particular stallion, he was best at around about the 200 million mark, uh, progressively motile sperm. So the story I'm trying to get across today, really, there's no perfect solution, but I do think you need to set the standards and work to a standard. And those standards are set out there to have those minimum amounts. And I always think you have to start with those minimum amounts of those optimal sperm doses. And only when you get that pregnancy data, can you change it? If you try and say i've heard so many times people said oh i've got eight straws we don't need eight straws let's put two in but do they know how good that stallion's fertility is and it's really important to see that so the doses can come in all different formats um oh, sorry we're going to fa um frozen semen can come in macro tubes that we used to do these glass hollow tubes that was years ago so some people use these uh these tubes here and other macro tubes and obviously half mil uh, straws. Um, a dose of semen. Now, this is always a bit of a contentious issue. How many straws do we should we be AIing your mare with your frozen semen? Now, it can be anything between one and ten. And Mark, and we must get you on here, Mark, from France at some point. Yeah, but I know in France, uh, I think you pretty much do most of your stallions at eight straws per insemination. Um, but it, it changes. Oh, Mark, unfortunately, stallion names with us. All oh, right, yes. <laughs> so Mark is adding, uh, is, is talking to us on the Snapchat here, but, um, and different people um, do it different ways. Uh, we've, um, on our printing system, we actually print what the concentration of that said stallion is on a straw, so people know exactly how much should be in that straw. 
Uh, but for instance, with, with Big Stars, a, a great example, we used to freeze everything at his at six straws, but we actually find that one straw works um, as well as, si as just as well as six straws. So um, straws per dose. How do you work out your straws per dose, Bart, when you're doing it? Do you always have a standard amount or do you look at the quality of the semen first and say, yeah, well, this one's yeah. going to be three straws and that one's going to be six straws? Yeah, uh, I try. I try to do. Uh, with four straws now, before we tried with three, but uh, I go back to four. <laughs> and um, after freezing or uh, after towing, um, I measure what's exactly inside. I make the motility, I make the viability, and then the middle of this two should be 35. And then I try to give away around about uh, 300 million of sperm cells in one dose of progressive sperm cells in one dose. So that should be, if my calculation was good and the work was fine, it should be four straws for each cellion. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's uh, three, but normally it should be four now. Yeah, and, and Desiree? <laughs> yeah, it depends a little bit on the stallion, of course, and it depends also a little bit of the feasibility from the stallion. If uh, the stelling is very good and you can freeze him very well, I can put more cells in it in one straw and you can use less. But if the stallion is not so good with freezing, I prefer to put less cells in one straw and use a little bit more so. Yeah. So yeah. it depends a little bit yeah. on the stallion how I'm going to work. Yeah. We're just doing a master's project at the moment. One of our um, uh, lab technicians here is doing it and they're doing it at uh, 5 million, 10 million, uh, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million. They're going all that to 500 million because we're looking at ICSI straws as well, obviously, and just seeing which is which we find is the best uh, concentration uh, because there are some different schools of thought out there. Too, too much concentration isn't so good for the semen. It's trying to find that, that optimal amount. Is it 200? Is it 300? Or if you do 400 million per mil, is that too concentrated? So I have to admit, I... Uh, and this is where this is why it's good to have different people have different ideas. I slightly do it differently because I we always standardize every one of our doses. So we always have a minimum of that 250 or 300 million uh, progressively motile sperm cells in the six straws. Um, and when we get the pregnant, because I've seen some pregnancy data, even on those can be very poor and some of them can be very good. And once we get the data back, then we alter, we alter our straws per dose after that. Um, so even if the semen has got 45 or 50% motility, we will still keep it at six straws per dose. Uh, um, even if, it, if in theory it might have 450 million progressively motile sperm there, we still keep it the same. But then when we get the pregnancy data back, in theory, we can alter those straws per dose afterwards. Uh, but we, that's, uh, as I say, everyone does it slightly different. I know Mark Spallar, he does it a different way again. But uh, we've all got the same sort of common goal, those minimum standards that we have to work to. Um, uh, plus, yeah. We've got one question from Keith come in saying, um, can a person expect acceptable pregnancy rates using 50 million progressive cells in a low dose deep horn insemination? I think, I mean, we've, we've proven that with a big star semen just then, you know, his is 50, so it's some of his semen was 50 million and he was getting really good pregnancy results. I mean, no, I mean, I don't know what you two think. Not every stallion out there will not work at 50 million uh, um, uh, progressively motile sperm. It just won't work for them. Uh, and then you get the odd stallion for some reason it, it will, but generally, yes, you, you really want those two or 300, million sperm cells uh, to get a pregnancy. Uh, to me, 50 mils, uh, sorry, 50 million sp progressively motile sperm, it might work for the odd stallion, but I don't think it's, what do you, what, what, what do you think, uh, Desiree? I agree with you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I, I, it's going to work for the odd one, but it's not going to, uh, uh, it's not going to, it's certainly not going to work for them all, I'm afraid. Um, so uh, when does fertility uh, uh, dose become compromised? So the subfertile stallion, obviously with a poor quality semen, uh, poor collection process, and we've done all this already, we might revisit it, how we handle that semen from the collection, washing that stallion off, making sure the quality of the semen, we've, we've got previous webinars, all that, every single little bit that you do when you're processing that semen 
can make a big difference to whether it's going to work or whether it's not going to work. And I think that's the attention to detail when freezing semen, I can't tell, is so important, so important. Um, so, uh, and it, it doesn't start from uh, the, the, the laboratory, it starts from the breeding shed. So again, uh, you can see the webinars that, and Bart's been on quite a few of these. We've gone through all how we freeze the semen, how we collect and everything else. So uh, incorrect uh, shipping or storage can compromise it. Poor handling or thawing the insemination dose. And also when doses are split, quite often we freeze at six straws, but they, somebody might say, oh, I'm gonna stick it in six mares and they might get nothing in fold. So, I think it's really important. Bart knows exactly how well that semen works. And if it works well with four straws, he sends out four straws because it works with four straws. If you go and put one straw in, you might be lucky, but you might end up with no mares in foal. And I think that's, uh, it's, that's, that's sometimes a problem. Splitting doses cannot work. So this is a bit of a summary. Um, this just tells you with fresh semen, uh, really the, the minimum standards that we would like to see with fresh chilled and frozen the number of sperm cells and the progressive motility on, on these. Um, uh, we've got a few more things after this, but the only mm -hmm. true test I really think is the absolutely, um, the ultimate test is, uh, is really looking at the pregnancy results in the mare at the end of the day. And there's no point looking at three or four mares because you need a whole range of mares. Just be, if, if those three mares don't get in foal, the next 10 might. So you have to look at a, a bigger um, uh, book of mares really to do this. Now, I think we've got time for maybe one of your case studies, uh, uh, Desiree. So I'll let you talk this one through, Desiree. Because we've got a few okay. cases. Because we've still got, yeah. uh, watching, <laughs> fly me, we've still got quite a few, there's not many people leaving us. So we've got hundreds of people still watching. So we might as well, uh, sorry, Rachel, we won't be too much longer, I promise you. Um, we're just finishing people. off now putting off their turkey dinners in the US. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> That's because of Desiree now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Desiree, oh, thank Desiree. you, Bob. Yeah. People, Green people, team. People, yeah. People love case studies. So I think this is a case study. Yeah. yeah. You tell us about this one. Yeah, it was actually um, um, a 10 year old stallion who come in, uh, come, come to the stallion stud farm. And we, um, he get a collect and stay for a longer period, take very weak. And uh, he had no power, long time fever, totally exhausted, and the stallion was treated with steroids. And after a year, he came to the stallion stud uh, farm and we collected him. And the concentration was, he had a very large volume and the concentration was around 80. And, um, and the mortality was zero. So the next, uh, next the day, next week, we start him again and the concentration went down, it went to 60. And then a week after that, it was 20. And a week after that, it was zero. And I start to collect this stallion for, um, um, for almost a year and uh, never underestimated history from a stallion because I talked, well, was he was sick? No, he was not sick. So we talked a little bit further. And yeah, but for a year ago, he was, um, he was very sick and he was treated by steroids. So what can be the problem here with this stallion? What do you think? Right, so Bart, do you wanna, do you wanna answer this one? But he was treated by steroids. Steroid, right? yes. One year ago. One year ago, yeah. So and in the end, he, he didn't have any semen left. I, yeah, I collected okay. him for okay. almost okay. a year, but he was, there was nothing. You don't get anything out because he yeah, the only the uh, flu only fluid. Yeah, you stop. He stops the producing of the semen. Yes, yeah. Because of this, so that's because what you get out in the beginning was old stuff, what was still inside. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, if he had this problem, he stops to produce the semen, so you cannot uh, collect normal semen from him yeah. anymore. Totally agree. I really want to say to all the people, uh, please, if you have a stallion, and of course, you know that if the stallions get better, it's the most important thing, but don't treat them with steroids because really it can affect everything. Yeah. That is yeah. Uh, so bad for the semen. Yeah. And we've got a question come in. Is it from, from Bruno. Bruno? From Bruno. I don't, there's a lot of Brunos out there. Ah, Bruno. yeah, from Portugal. Well, yeah. I don't know what it is. Yes. It is. Yes. Hi, Bruno. Good to see you. His question, well, you read the question. Yeah. So um, what's the correlation between the morphology 
and nucleo counter viability. Yeah, I think it's a good one. This oh, good. it's a lot. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, I, I think the nuclear cell counter gives you a really good, accurate, and a, a snapshot straight away there and then, and can most probably tell you a lot of the problems but morph it won't tell you whether it's got a bent tail it won't tell you you know other morphological uh, abnormalities so yeah um so exactly you will see the viability is only that the membrane of the of the sperm is have no defect yeah. but you can have a lot of good membranes but if they have no tail you get no pregnancy so the morphology is important for this whole yeah, Bruno, when are we getting our invite to uh, to Portugal as well? I feel like a good trip coming on at some point. I think it'd uh, be a nice place to go when the coronavirus is all finished. So, <laughs> have, you, have you been out to Portugal, uh, Bart? But? They invite me, but they invite me just before the uh, COVID-19 was coming. So, oh. yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> um, your next case, uh, Desiree. Okay. And that is, oh yeah, yeah, that's a very, that is a ro really nice case, actually. He was a young stallion, and he was never covering mares before. And he had a very small volume, very, very high concentration. And the motility, I can watch it for ages. It was really, <laughs> really, I really love this motility. But the funny part is, with this motility, if I put him in the CASA system, he, he was not progressive. So if I put him in the CASA system, the CASA system tells me it's 50%. Mm. And if I look under a microscope, and that is the thing with the CASA system, and check your own eyes, always trust your own eyes in this. And I can watch it for ages. You know, if you have a seminal plasma problem, you can, it's very similar. You know, the stallion starts, to, uh, the motility is very good in the beginning, and after an hour, it's getting slow. And then most of the time, you have a seminal plasma problem. You can take away all the seminal plasma and extend it again, and that is better for the semen. But this stallion, it was very nice motility. It was calm, it was straightforward. It was a strong, steady. You know, sometimes you see the character of the stallion back in the semen, and it's really crazy to say that, but it, it is. And um, so I was never afraid with the stallion. I was never afraid, okay, just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It, it was 75% by me, but the Gaza system gave 50% because it was not that progressive. But how fertile do you think the stallion will be? It was. Go on, tell us. It was so fertile. He was really, really unbelievable good. I think every mare get involved with this one, yeah. in, in full with this stallion. And it was, you know, it's, it's so funny. You need a progressive, of course, you need it. But sometimes when, when it's, uh, and also I freeze the stallion also, when, it, you know, before, if, before freezing, it just looks the same as after the freezing, and that is exactly what you want. But it's not progressive, but it's very good motile. So yeah. that was, and in the end, it always depends on how fertile is the stallion. And that is the most important thing, I think, what is yeah. ever going to be. Yeah, I do like these small volumes, high concentrated ones. I yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I much before. For them. I'm going to yeah. skip over these ones, if you don't mind, your next one, because uh, yeah. time, time's running on uh, a little bit. Just to go on about our next webinar, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, hopefully, we might be doing something with the sort of the ICSI side of things um, and uh, looking at uh, ICSI uh, and maybe even uh, looking with uh, doing some, some cloning and looking at the um, sort of the uh, epididymal side as well, all about new technologies. Uh, that's going to be in the end of J January. Um, just if you want any of our contact details to contact us, uh, we can always pass on readily Desiree's or Bart's. Just let me know. Take a picture of this page and uh, we can soon come back to you uh, on, on anything like that. Uh, we've just got time for a couple more questions. Have we got any more questions? Yeah, so we've got a question from Martin. Uh, hi, Martin. He said, how common is it to find that stallion semen doesn't freeze? Um, we, we find, uh, I'd like to think now with new technologies, we can freeze, if the semen's good enough quality, uh, we can freeze most stallions. Um, and we can most probably, I'd say we can most probably freeze about sort of 
80 percent no, maybe between 85 percent of stallions now we can't freeze them all i wish we could um but yes there's always going to be some stallions that we can't freeze but with with so many new technologies like putting them through density gradients equipure and and things like that to to to, to, to it yeah but for sure you cannot freeze every stallion i have yeah. tried with a few everything and <laughs> basically knows we tried with a lot of things but one time the viability is super and then you have no movement and so okay yeah. maybe 90 percent but for sure not all the stallions yeah no no yeah. i agree, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um I think we've better just wrap it up now. We've gone on for two and a quarter hours. Honestly, the amount of people coming in saying thank you to all you presenters. Uh, so I'm just going to slowly close up. Don't anybody go away because we've got the big giveaway yet. So first of all, for anybody goes, Rachel, can you announce the? We've just got to thank our sponsors tonight, uh, Kima Tech and Spur Vital. What? Who's the? Who's the winner? The lucky winner tonight of Spur Vital. Uh, so first of all, I'm just uh, showing here the prizes. So the prizes are uh, a choice. You choose between the um, AI kit or the small box of extender, whichever one you choose. And the uh, winner is Peter Corti. Peter, we will send you an email so that you can let us know which of these prizes is your choice. Great. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Rachel. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, we got. Really, really great from South Africa. We just got somebody thanking us all the way from South Africa. So I think we're really hitting all parts of the world. And, well, that uh, should be a great place to go to, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, South yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think me, Bart, Desiree, uh, I have to bring Faye on, uh, uh, <laughs> on, on tour. So anybody wants to go out there, uh, it still amazes me. Uh, brilliant. I really appreciate these comments coming in because I don't know whether you can see them as well, Desiree. Can you and Bart? Um, yes, yeah, some comments I see. Yeah, 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 it's really good to see all these. Very so, nice. Um, as I say, the next webinar is all about new technologies, uh, about sexing semen, ICSI cloning epididymal at the end of January. Obviously, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Um, the charity tonight is the Horse Trust, and all the money uh, that you put for that, all the money will go to the charity. Um, and uh, Rachel will send an email uh, tomorrow or the next day all about. Uh, how you can get that involved. A thank you again to the sponsors, Spur Vital. A really a massive, massive thank you. We've got a lady in the room for the first time ever tonight. Mm -hmm. So Desiree, uh, I know you're a little bit nervous uh, about tonight because we yeah. had nearly a thousand people sign up tonight. It was quite incredible. And we've get the, the, uh, the again, you can see comment after comment after comment coming in, how people enjoyed it. There was so much to get through there. Uh, and I really, really appreciate, uh, as I say, no one, Everyone, you do this because you, you want to be a part of it. And uh, so thank you. Oh, someone from Colombia. Um, big hugs. So somebody, I don't know, from Colombia is just saying that. So thank you, Desiree. Thank you, Bart. As always, you're an absolute thank inspiration. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Bart, well, yeah, you, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's, it's a quarter past uh, um, 10 or 20 past 10 in your place. And you're most probably up at four o'clock in the morning knowing you. So uh, appreciate you. Uh, uh, no, at the moment, not. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, like this. so but I really do mean it from but I appreciate everything you put into this because without you, you really make uh, these your wealth of knowledge out there is just second to none. So thank you for that. And also I've got to thank thank our team here. Uh, I don't know if we can see Faye there. Uh, she's out uh, in the, the swamps as well. Yeah. For the hey. uh, Faye's been hey, in, the hey. Hello. Yeah. in the background getting all the questions done. Uh, and really to thank British Breeding. Uh, as well they you know they put this on they've set the platform up um and rachel crikey you're still sitting here at uh, 20 past every time i keep pushing the limits i think uh before you have to go to bed so uh, a big thank you anybody wants to get in touch with we really are open to for discussion and we're out there to, to help you so please please get in contact with us i think hopefully i've said thank you to everybody um so somebody said harvey's listening I, I love seeing all these comments coming in um and uh really appreciate uh, all your time so it's good night uh, from ourselves and uh we'll catch you soon in july have a good christmas i know it's a bit early to say that stay safe and we'll catch up next year for our next big webinar uh in in uh, end, of, end of january it's all about new technologies have a good night thank sure. you bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.